morning, everyone, and welcome to the opening drive on a Friday Eve in St. Louis. It is 7 o'clock. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Brooke Grimsley is here. Danny Mack is here. Matthew Rocchio is here. I'm Randy Carricker. It's great to have you with us on the heels of another Blues victory. How are we doing, kids? I'm doing great. The Blues, we just can't give up on them, can we? Well, they're still alive, and they won't go away, and they just <laughs> won't go away. away. Uh, yeah. It the, still makes it fun. Well, it does. The Blues are alive. They need three wins in their final three games, and they need the Vegas Golden Knights to go one and three in their remaining four. If that happens, then your St. Louis Blues will be the A seed in the NHL's Western Conference playoffs for 2024. They have totally exceeded my expectations, by the way. I, I didn't see them doing this. I thought they could make a playoff series, and if they got to a second round, that was the ceiling. But uh, to have three games to go and still be mathematically alive, I give them credit for that. I just look back at the, the games near Christmas. I look back at the games against San Jose, and if you win those games, you're in the playoffs. San Jose was a big one. The games right before Bruby got fired were huge. Uh, the, the Columbus and Chicago games there, and they lost to Vegas then too, and, and you know could have played with them. So yeah, there's a lot there. But the Blues did win last night, so we're going to talk about that. Greg Amzinger is going to join us at the bottom of this hour to talk some baseball. Bernie Federico, the uh, Hockey Hall of Famer, at 8:15. Uh, Robert Thomas will join us at 845 to celebrate this Blues victory. And the Cardinals have a travel day to Arizona. I wish I had a travel day to Arizona today. <laughs> <laughs> to get away to the yeah. warmer weather. Yeah, you had yeah. one, uh, what, about a month ago you yeah, were on vacation? I, I, I can go back there. That's your place. It's, it's That's good. where you go. Although it is supposed to be 80 degrees in St. Louis over the weekend. Is oh. it really? Yeah. Yes. So can take it. It's like Masters uh, weather here in St. Louis. It kind of is at the moment. But they uh, have delayed the Masters this morning because of bad weather. I'm happy. That means when we get off the air, we can go home and get ready to watch the Masters. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that'll be the case. Uh, last night over at Enterprise Center, I hope you got to your seats on time if you had tickets for that game because the Blues scored early and often. Blues get it ahead. Cairo moves it in. Shoot, score! Behind the Blues goal, Tyler Tucker's there, moves it ahead. Butch Navich out of the zone. Side to Kairou. Kairou in, shoot, score! Kairou's got two. The Blues are up 2-0. 17-14 to go, period number one. Sammy Blay off the end board. Fell to the wall by Jones. Alexandrov gets in to strip the puck on a line with Walker to Kessel. Far point, Krug straight away. Now, score! Blues will bring it in as Braden Shen takes a hip check there from Jared Tenorti. Blues get it to the far wing. Score! Bull Duke, tight angle. Behind the post. And it's 4-0 Blues as Tenorti starts to paw at Braden Shen in the corner. That came at 6.59 of the first period. The Blues' fourth goal. Cairo with a couple. The first from Letty and Hofer. Second one from Saad and Bucinavich. And then Krug scores from Kessel and Alexandrov. Bolduk from Thomas and Schenner. Thomas also scored a goal in the third period from Shen and Bull Duke, and the Blues roll over the Blackhawks by a score of 5-2. to two. Overall, a very impressive night. Joel Hofer between the pipes for the Blues, and they needed this one, obviously. They need every game the rest of the way. But I'm intrigued by Jordan Cairo because throughout the season, we have talked about, would they trade him? Would they consider trading him? And I think there's just too much talent there. It's too much of a gamble to move that guy. It really is. And right now he has 29 goals mm -hmm. that I believe right now on the season. Now, of course, you look at last season, he had 37 goals. But don't you think it's safe to say that he could surpass 29 goals, maybe get to 33 yeah, goals? 30, is that I, fair I, enough? How about a goal a game? 32, 29, 33, 130. How about a goal a game for the rest of the season? You're saying he's not going to score two goals like he did 42 seconds well, apart yeah, like last will. night? Maybe he will. The guy that I love is Robert Thomas. Now, yeah. Robert Thomas with another goal last night. I, I look at him as being a 30, 35 goal scorer before it's all mm -hmm. said and done. He became the first blue to record 83 or more points since Pavel Dimitra going back all the way to the 2 3 season. So congratulations to Robert. As uh, Randy mentioned, we're going to visit with him. The thing I was disappointed with last night, if there was anything, I wanted a good old-fashioned brawl. Me too. I mean, he scored <laughs> yeah. four goals on four shots, which is what the 
Blues did. It was a historic start to the game. It's the Blues and the Hawks, and it's like, eh, nothing really. There was a little dust up with Braden Shin, and that's it. I thought, okay, this is it. We're going to get back to old time hockey. We're going to get back to the rivalry of the Blues and the Hawks. Four goals that quickly. Someone see, needs to send a message, and then it's going to be an all out brawl, and we got nothing. Do you feel like it's still a rivalry at this point? Of course, it's a very historic oh, yeah. rivalry, mm -hmm. but with the Blackhawks, they haven't been that great. I know that this season you have Connor Bedard, and he is the star of the NHL right now, the young star that is. But other than that, they really don't have any other talent surrounding him. Now, you did have a big moment with Tyler Tucker with that hit on Connor Bedard, and that was talked about a lot. So I liked that aspect, but... I would like to see some old-fashioned hockey there. I thought when Tenorti and Blay got into it at the end with 30 seconds left, I thought we were going to get the old school. Gloves flying, yeah, all, sticks all flying. The yeah. Yeah. Like the, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was the, uh, was it St. Uh, St. Valentine's Day? Yeah, the, the that was it. Stevens and Manson, right? Yes. That was awesome. That was as good as hockey that's, got. That's, it, that's what it used to be. Yeah. And it's just not, I, I couldn't believe that we didn't see more of a physical game after that. Fighting, yeah. not just physical, but fighting after that. It's just like you lay down and you go, well, they scored four goals, and, you know, that's just the way it's played in this day and age. Make it fun for the fans. Bob Plager used to say that uh, the, the Blues and the Hawks would be standing before a face-off at, at one of the dots looking up into the stands to watch the fights because the fights in the stands were better <laughs> right. than the fights on the ice. <laughs> that's old-time hockey. Yeah, it is. That old smoke above the arena and yep. people coming in ready to watch a fight, maybe get into one. You had the Hawks jerseys <laughs> in the crowd. Loved it. That's it the way great. it was. So the Blues beat Chicago. They take on the Hurricanes tomorrow night, and that's a pregame at 6, action at 7 for you here on 101 ESPN. Meanwhile, while yesterday at the ballpark, the Cardinals fell to the Philadelphia Phillies, although the Cardinals had a chance uh, throughout the, the course of this game. They, they missed some opportunities. They gave Philadelphia a run early, unfortunately, for the rookie, Victor Scott II. But uh, the, the Cardinals fall in the finale of the three-game series to the Phillies by a score of 4-3. to three. Okay, you're 6-7 and seven without... Sonny Gray making multiple starts. You're missing Edmund and Nupar, missing two key bullpen arms in Middleton O'Brien. Would you take the start of six and seven? Even if you don't have those injuries, I would have taken six and seven to start the season. Just because of the schedule. Yeah. 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 Really? I would have as well, because I think that that's something that at least I didn't expect. I don't think many others expect it as well. Now, yesterday, to me, in my opinion, that was possibly a winnable game for the Cardinals, and it was just a lot of mistakes. Not a great day, as you mentioned, for Victor Scott the second. You hate to see that happen. I mean, he had that first ending, inning fielding error, which mm -hmm. led to those two unearned runs for Lance Lynn, and he also had his eighth inning base running gaffe that proved to be really costly there. But he's staying with the club, even with Lars Newtbar coming back. Yeah, I think he could stay for a while. I mean, I don't know mm -hmm. who would take his position at this point, but where is the offense? Where is Nolan Arenado right now? He hasn't homered in 38 games. And guys, I just went and looked this up because his swings are just, he, he, there's something going on with him. He mm -hmm. hasn't barreled a ball this year. Not one. Wow. He has not barreled a ball. Goldschmidt's hitting 182 with 16 strikeouts. And the other guy you got to look at right now who's kind of getting overshadowed because the corners aren't doing it is Jordan Walker. Yeah. Jordan Walker has 27 balls in play. And I was curious about this. Remember why he was sent down last year? Why well, they wanted to get more balls in the air. Drive the ball. He's too big of a guy not to have balls that are going gap to gap and home runs. 27 balls he's hit in play. He's got 16 on the ground. So that's nearly 60%. He has to get the ball in the air. That's just the way the game is played, whether you like it or not. And those three, that trio, they have not hit. If they hit, I think they win some of these games. But, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. You got to hit. And here's the thing. The Braves are averaging 6.9 runs a game early. Small sample size, right? The Cardinals are averaging only 3.85. There's only four teams in the National League that are averaging fewer runs per game than the Cardinals. And for those three names right there that you mentioned, Daniel, that's inexcusable because you you have a guy who was the top or one of the top two prospects in baseball before last year and you have these two guys that you're paying one of them's getting 35 million the other guy's getting 26 million those are the guys that you're counting on and not only are the numbers bad but the look is bad you're right the metrics are bad for those guys too so they've had three runs in five consecutive games for the first time in franchise history and three or fewer in eight of the 13. It's just not going to cut it. You know, the middle of your lineup's got to be very good. The other thing that should not be overlooked is Andre Pallante. And when I watch Andre Pallante, it looks like he's pitching for his 
Major League life. Like, he doesn't look relaxed out there. And something's going on with Zach Thompson. Now, he, he was able to get through it, did a good job, not taking that away from him, but his velocity is way down. The sharpness of the breaking ball at times is there. Other times it's not, but something's kind of going on with him. With this team right now, which one concerns you the most? We talked about Victor Scott the second and has... I, his batting average is what right now? It has to be extremely low. But, but I think it's like 075. They didn't give him a hit, by the way, when he turned left at first base yesterday. That was counted as a uh, put out yep. for Alec Bohm. And that broke in. Assist. It snapped, what, an 0 for 24 streak, I believe, right. that he it had going it, on. It, it, so which one concerns you right now the most? Victor Scott the second, Jordan Walker, Paul Goldschmidt, or Nolan Arnato? Well, you can send. Uh, here's the way I look at it. You, you, Scott is not ready. And you can send him down and hopefully get him ready. The big one for me, because we, we've seen Paul Goldschmidt have bad starts before. Jordan Walker, theoretically, should be able, if you coach him properly, uh, and you've got to work with. That's why you have a hitting coach for young hitters to get have them get better. But, Dan, the, the one you mentioned, and it goes back to last year, is Nolan Arnato, who had to end the season, remember? He ended the season on the IL because of an injury. And you wonder what's going on with that body and, like you said, Dan, with that swing. Yeah, he just does not look comfortable. Now, to his credit, as uncomfortable he as he has looked, he's still getting hits. I think mm. he leads the club in hits. But the one to answer your question, Brooke, for me is Goldschmidt. 182, 16 strikeouts. Historically a slow starter. And if you're, Car if you're the Cardinals, you hold your, your hat on that and say, well, he's going to get better. But he has to be if this team's going to go anywhere. And let me point something out. Dan, you know this better than I, having been around the team for so many years. When you get to the stage of Arenado and Goldschmidt, hitting coaches have nothing to do with you. Now, if you go to the hitting coaches, they will help you out. But in terms of the hitting coaches coming to you, veteran hitters and, and a guy like Turner Ward, he, he was a veteran hitter. The, the hitting coach doesn't go to hitters and say, hey, let's work on this. Those hitters, they, they kind of handle it themselves. They've got their swing. They've, they've got the reason that they've stayed in the majors and that they're making all that money. So those two specifically, I would not blame the hitting coaches. I know we'll get text saying blame the hitting coach, but I don't think it applies here. Yeah, and when they go to the hitting coach, more times than not, it's, it's looking at video, trying to break that down, and then going to the ballpark early before anybody arrives mm -hmm. and sit there and take BP and say, this is what we need to do. What are you laughing at? I'm laughing because I remember going so many times when we were at CAMOX and I would get to the ballpark at 1.30 to do my sports cast. I'd from 2 to 6 in the afternoon. <laughs> and completely empty ballpark. And you'd hear the F word. Ah! Uh, yell and then you walk up the steps <laughs> and there's Edmonds. Yeah. Every single time he did a pop up and just he'd be cursing and it would echo throughout the entire ballpark. And to his credit, he put in the work. He sure did. And there are guys, I'm sure, that Goldie and Arenado are putting in the work. I, I never doubt that. No. It's just, it's got to get better. It's got to get over the hump to where you, now you feel comfortable when you're in the batter's box. And I just don't see them looking comfortable at the plate, especially Arenado. Yeah. Just so, especially with him. And the Cardinals, uh, maybe for those guys, just a, a good mental health day as they travel to Arizona to take on the uh, defending National League champion Diamondbacks tomorrow in the first game of a three-game series. And after the Diamondbacks, they get Oakland at Oakland. That's when you get on track. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you get your wins. <laughs> Hopefully. The Masters is supposed to start this morning, and that has been delayed already. So uh, no Masters updates for you this morning. And that's, show that's okay because it's going to be all day. It'll be, it'll be perfect. Yeah. The rain's supposed to yeah. go away, and then we'll have beautiful weather and sit my butt down and watch the Masters there all weekend. It's a beautiful thing. And it looks like... Uh, Shohei Otani's interpreter is maybe in some trouble. Going to be charged federally for stealing money from Shohei Otani. Now, by the Yikes. way, and, and uh, we, we talked about the access that he had to Shohei Otani's accounts. Apparently, he changed the notifications. So when he would take the money out, it never showed up in an email or a notification to Shohei Otani. I saw that report coming out. And so then it makes you wonder, oh, maybe it's not that crazy that Shohei Otani didn't know. To well, the full extent. And the other thing is, if you're Major League Baseball, what else do you need to do? I mean, the federal authorities are involved. So yeah. when the federal authorities are involved, you just take the, the lead from them and say, that is that is our investigation. Yeah. They, they've already done it for us. <laughs> if, if, if you're Major League Baseball, you go... 
<laughs> yeah, we don't have to do this. And this guy's still the face of everything. And don't look. It yeah. reminds me of Leslie Nielsen with the dumpster fire behind. Don't. Nothing. There's nothing don't, going on yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It still feels like, though, we need some more clarity because the stories are all over the place. I just feel like we need a full report. And maybe that's what's going to happen here towards the end. A full report, a full breakdown of how this all went out. Yeah. It, it, at some point, it's up to Shohei, right, to reveal how his... He's not an ignorant, ignorant person, but how he was ignorant of the situation and how he needs to be more careful. And maybe this can be a teaching moment for every player in Major League Baseball that uh, makes a lot of money. You know, I also think he needs to come out and talk about it. Just come out, talk about it, make sure that when he does, that he addresses the situation and then puts it to bed and moves on and becomes the face of and is the face of Major League Baseball. Yeah, and and he did briefly, and it was just a very short written statement, but I get to your point of actually answering questions exactly. from reporters. Exactly. And Rob Manfred did last night at a late press conference uh, to talk about the situation. That's Rob Mann for the commissioner of Major League Baseball. <laughs> that really saying. is. <laughs> That's really how they feel right now. They're like, please, please stop. Stop looking at this. He's going to play this season. Does it surprise you guys that he is still able to play the season, even with an active investigation going on right now? It shows you how good he is and how focused he is. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. You just let him go and wait for the, the authorities to do their yeah. research and investigation. And until that comes out, then he keeps playing. Yep. He's, he's really good. No, I'm, I, I had a comment. I'm not even going to use it. Uh, so uh, it's probably uh, a good thing. <clears throat> yeah. We're probably off running. What were you going to say? <laughs> now I, now Dan, I'm intrigued. no. You usually put a <laughs> stop right. to this. Okay, I'll wait till we're off the air. I'll wait till the commercial break. <laughs> I'll do it when we come back. We're sick of it here oh, no. on 101 ESPN. <laughs> Hey, I want you to know what's going on with my friends at Chesterfield Fence and Deck. And you know what's going on? Great products. If you are trying to have an outdoor project, project done with your house, Chesterfield Fence and Deck provides the best and longest lasting outdoor products available. They have skilled installation teams that carry out a mission to be the very best in customer service and quality craftsmanship every time they do a job. And they've been doing jobs here in St. Louis for 56 years. So what you need to do is get in touch with Chesterfield Fence and Deck at 800-300-4054 or on the web at chesterfieldfence.com. And they'll do a fantastic job of taking care of a deck for you or a patio room or a screen room or a sunroom and 
they specialize in fences. If you're driving around the area and you see a sign that somebody had a Chesterfield fence and deck fence put up, you know that's a great fence. I had my put up a long time ago. It's a lifetime product project and a lifetime product, and it has been fantastic for me and my family. You'll love Chesterfield Fence and Deck, A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, and Randy approved. On the web at ChesterfieldFence.com, call 800-300-4054. Chesterfield Fence and Deck, the sign you have the very best. Time for Sick of It here on 101 ESPN. Get your text in to the Air Comfort Service text line. That line is 314-399-9646. 314-399-YO-HO. Yo-HO. Oh. Dan is on board. You know what I'm sick of? I'm sick of the other shows on this station, which include the Balloon Party. Be careful. And BK and Ferrario <laughs> and the Fast Lane not buying in to the ease and the simplicity of Yo-HO. I'm going to leave that. I think the whole station. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely whole leaving that. The whole station should be on board with Y-O-H-O on your phone. Well, they need to come up with their own dance, though, so That's that we can really true. have yeah. some separation here. Yeah. We are action-packed here in the opening drive. <laughs> I'm going to leave that, Randy. Um, Different segment, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, I think, oh, yeah. Well, I'm, um, yeah, whatever. You're okay, sick bro. of it, and you're <laughs> leaving that. Yes, I am. <laughs> Go right ahead. Well, it's moments like the Masters this weekend where you have all of the world's best golfers back together again, all the big names back together, and it reminds you just how ridiculous it is that we have this conflict still going on with the PGA Tour and Live Golf. So it's such a distraction. It's so disenchanting to the fans. We're talking about every single sport is trying to figure out how to get new fans, re-engage fans. Fans, and golf is losing fans because they are so tired of everything going on behind the scenes with the PGA Tour and Live Golf. So I am just sick of it. I want to see a merger. I want to just see this come to an end so that we can enjoy moments like this weekend where you have the big names, the world's best golfers all back together again. I, I'm in total agreement. I think this is the most important Masters that we've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that's kind of a bold statement when you say, well, you've had the return of Tiger Woods. You had his first ever Masters. You had Jack Nicholas in 1986 you had Bubba Watson shot uh, that he had I mean there's been great moments but getting the best in the world to see how they come together it's just a great reminder that these guys need to be together every single weekend so that you have the name brand of some of these individuals atop the leaderboard every single weekend the real tournaments are being won by people that shouldn't be winning them and the real players are playing in tournaments that don't matter so that's the problem that you have right now with They're golf. They're exhibitions. Yeah, they, they are. The 54 hole, the team golf. The, you know what? I know this sounds stupid because I never wear long pants unless it's really cold when I play golf. But I just think it looks unprofessional when those guys wear shorts on a, a pro golf event. I, I'm with you. I, I guess I don't mind it all that much if that's the least of my worries. Mm -hmm. I still don't like it. I don't either. And so I'm with you. I think we need to get back to... The, the class of the, the PGA Tour, and that includes all of the best golfers in the world being together every week. All right, I'm sick of the lack of the Cardinals offense. Third lowest average at 219. Third fewest home runs at 11. Third lowest batting average with runners in scoring position. Eighth lowest OPS currently right now in baseball. It's got to get better if this team's going to win. Whew. I think that, Dan, you're saying that to a lot of fans and how they feel right now because you want to see that. And we do understand if you want to do the Tony Russa drop right here, Randy, it is still early on in the season. I know it he is. says it's the first week, and I do get that it's very early on here, but there's some concerning patterns that are carrying over from last season. We talked about Nolan Arnauto earlier where he hit the injured list and just seems like he just looks off still. You have Paul Goldschmidt still off to a slow start. Now, some of the younger players, like Yvonne Herrera, has been great, and so it's great to see some of the younger players taking 
I guess I wouldn't say the most of the load of what's happening right now, but it also shouldn't be all on them to do this right now offensively for this team. Back in 1986, the Cardinals lost to Jack Clark, and right after Clark got hurt, the Whitey said, boys, it's just not going to happen this year. And the Cardinals wound up with the fewest runs in the league in 1986, 3.8, which is right about what they're averaging right now. And ultimately what Whitey decided to do is have the batting averages taken off the scoreboard so the player go up and have his position and his name. So we, he didn't have to look up and see that he was hitting 190. Well, there's a bunch of those. Yeah, I know. So maybe <laughs> when the Cardinals come home, if this is still the case, what they need to do is just take the numbers down. Okay, you got a lot of numbers, just take them down if they're bad. Uh, Matthew, what do we got on the text line? I'm sick of how the higher ups at Target have instead of increasing their prices on stuff over the years. No, you don't get thirty bucks for a plain white T-shirt. I want a three pack for thirteen bucks. Sick of it. Oh, that's very specific there. It was. It like is. I like it. I like it's, a, it's an interesting thought. I never really thought of. I, I didn't realize uh, that you used to buy one T-shirt at a time. I feel what like would Uncle Randy anyway. say? Uncle Randy would say, "Get over it. You, you, you're going to need three T-shirts ultimately, so deal with it." <laughs> Everything like he is wants getting to buy more the three expensive. Pack. Yeah, Everything I, is getting more expensive right now, though. Yeah, because yeah. the higher ups at Target want to want to want to oh, line their pockets. Big Target's really really taking it to everybody right now. I do oh, understand yeah. the frustration. Grocery shopping. Grocery shopping is the thing that shocks me the most. No matter where you go, it feels like for just two people walking away. If I want to create a healthy mm-hmm. meal. I'm like, what in the world is going on now? It's like $200 a week. I think you need to avoid healthy. Is that what it is? I just go have McDonald's every day. Yeah, there you go. Even that's increased. (laughs) I'm really sick of people yelling, get in the hole, every time a professional golfer hits a shot. I'm with you there. I kind of like it. (laughs) Not every shot. Not not on a 394-yard par four. Yeah, but, but even those guys team. might get a hole in one. Rory's done it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you watch the Ryder Cup, there was a hole that was like that, and guys were going for the green. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Um, they they talked about it yesterday as their kind of State of the Union address with the Masters. They think that that's going to go over eight thousand yards at some point. <laughs> eight thousand, unreal. Uh, I'm sick of how the Blackhawks swarm every player who lays a big hit on Bedard. I wouldn't be sick of that if I were a Blackhawks fan. I think you have to do that. The That's hockey purists yeah. just cringed. Yep, I'll bet you <laughs> Bettman likes it. Absolutely. Yeah. You need to keep your stars. That's why you have fighting. Yeah. That's why you have enforcers, which you don't have anymore, but that's why you do have fighting mm-hmm. is to protect the best players on the ice. Yeah. I, I, I think, by the way, Tucker it. might be an enforcer. You think so? It seems like he has that demeanor and that skill yeah, set. Maybe so. Sick of Kyrie carving up the bad, bad, the bad teams. Where are you when we play good teams? Somebody's got to carve Uh-oh. up the bad teams. <laughs> there you go, Randy. Oh, you know, come on. 29 you, goals this season, yeah, guys. You, you want to beat them, too. In fairness, he wasn't really scoring that many against the Sharks, was he? No, not, not enough. No. But he wasn't the only one, sadly. No. That's the other part of that. Right. Yeah, I, I just wish he would score 86 and just score against everybody. Kind of like uh, number 16. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. where you're going with this. That's totally where I'm going. Even if Kyrie would give me 70, which during the early 90s, that was a bad year for Hully. Do you see Alex Ovechkin had his 18th 30-goal season? Yeah, crazy. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and he's had quite a stretch run here, too. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. And thank you very much for your text. We do appreciate it. Coming up, Greg Amsinger, MLB Network, joining us as he does every Thursday here on 101 ESPN.
Ah, uh, yes, I love visiting with Stuart from Stewart's American Mortgage Thursday morning. Danny Mac with you. If you're someone who is looking to purchase a home, or refinance, or if you're looking to re-consolidate uh, some of that ugly credit card debt, maybe you don't know exactly what direction to go in any, any of these things. Let me make it easy for you. Call Stewie from Stewart's American Mortgage. And Stewie, welcome to the show as always. Um, what about like building up your wealth? What do you need to do? You know what, Danny, single people always ask me, how can I create wealth? I don't have a lot of money. I want to build something up for my future. What do I do? Well, if you're single and you're not tied down, here's a recommendation for you. Buy some rental properties. This ESPN listener put 5% down on a four-family unit. 5% was gifted from mom and dad. He got the bagel loan with no closing costs. And now he's going to stay there for a year. And after he's going to move on, he's going to buy another one. And with houses appreciating, the value is going to continue to rise. You're building cash flow. Later on, he gets married. He can't go ahead and do that in the four-family units. Okay, but by that time, he's going to have four or five properties under the belt, high cash flow, equity building. He's way ahead of the game, and it all started with 5% down. Well, you just mentioned the bagel loan. There's a lot of people that wonder about that. If you borrow 200000 or more, there's no underwriting fees, no appraisal fees, no title fees, no lender fees, no closing costs. So Stewie is the guy. He makes it easy. Any questions on rates, the industry, the trends, give Stewart a call. He'll uh, pick up his personal cell phone. You can text him. Here's the number, 314-324-4440, 314-324-4440, or you can Google the bagel loan. NMLS number 226715.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. A big game last night for the St. Louis Blues, and they came to play early and often, whipping off four straight goals in a 4:55 span as they win the game five to two over the Blackhawks. They get a little help from a loss from the Vegas Golden Knights. No Blues in action tonight, but you can stay awake for a late game as the Kings, still technically in the way of the Blues, will face off against the Calgary Flames in a late game. If you are doing some scoreboard watching, the Cardinals, on the other hand, also on a travel day today they beat they lost to the Phillies early yesterday at four to three and they will start a series against the Diamondbacks tomorrow with an 840 first pitch that is your sports center update driven by Johnny Londoff find your roads up 24 7 at Londoff.com and Londoffautoplex.com are you kidding me Brooke, Dan, Randy, the opening drive on 101 ESPN. And when Jackson Holiday got the word that he was being called up the other night, Matt Holiday started looking for flights, couldn't find any from Stillwater uh, so that he could make his way to his son Matthew or uh, Jackson's MLB debut in Boston. It was hard to get there. So Matt Holiday had to call in a favor and get a friend who owns a plane to fly him to Boston, and uh, Greg Emsinger's on the line right now. How did it feel to get that phone call from Matt Holiday? Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, when I hear all these baseball players' travel stories, which throughout the years of their careers, they sound awful. Once again, I'm reminded how lucky I am that I was never good enough to play in the major league. <laughs> Pretty lucky, huh? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It sounds grueling. Yeah. I mean, those long, chartered flights where they're playing cards and eating and drinking whatever they want. No, thank you. Not for me. <laughs> hey, Greg, before we get to the Cardinals, let's talk about the uh, the Jackson Holiday debut. Even though he went 0 for 4, I know that you have high hopes for him. Do, uh, how good do you think Jackson Holiday can be? Well, look, I, how good do they think he is? They they called him up before April 13th, which, which means they're counting on him finishing the top three for AL Rookie of the Year and every step along the way. He's passed with flying colors. He should have made the team out of spring training after hitting over 300, a few home runs, playing sparkling defense. And for anyone to watch him try to catch that pop-up last night in shallow right field, the Bermuda Triangle, as they call it, and drop it windy last night in Boston, second base is not his natural position. So we see all of these kids get moved over to second base. Bryce Terang last year with the Brewers, who's off to a terrific start in his sophomore season. To me, it, it takes a while for those guys. So let him kind of ease into that. I was a bit surprised that Gunnar Henderson's holding on that spot at short because I think Jack Holiday can play over there. He moves around to me like Francisco Lindor. And, and he's going to be a very similar type of player. I think he's going to hit for more average than Francisco Lindor. He's faster than Francisco Lindor. He's a star in the making and uh, good for, for Matt Holiday and his family and from everything I'm hearing. His other son, who's still in high school, who's sitting next to him, is like the truth. He, he's the LeBron of baseball on his way. He's a right-handed hitting, taller version, faster version of Bryce Harper. And by the so way, that, that's coming. The Holiday family is going to take over baseball. I, I want to mention this, Greg, because people last year, when Matt Holiday uh, abruptly turned down the, the Cardinal bench coach job after accepting it. Last night is the reason that he turned down that job. There was nothing nefarious here. He wanted to, to be able to celebrate these sorts of things with his family. He could afford to do so. And there was nothing with the Cardinals. There was nothing with the team that caused Matt Holiday to not be the Cardinal bench coach. It's all about having the opportunity to see Jackson's major league debut, to work with Ethan as he approaches being the number one pick in next year's draft. That's why Matt Holiday isn't a Cardinal bench coach. You do not get these games back. You don't. And, and, and good for Matt, I do the same thing. I'll tell you a personal story. As broadcasters, we have agents. We're, we're similar in a way of, of athletes, except we're just not athletic. And, and we negotiate contracts. I, in my contract, my last three contracts, my daughter started to become a very good basketball player in high school. I submitted her basketball schedule every year. It was actually language in my contract that they would do everything in their power to let me have that day off to go watch her play. And that has remained the same 
throughout her college basketball career. She's a Division three player at Swarthmore College in Philadelphia. And this stuff matters to me. There, if you have the means to do it, you're not missing a game. I, I've been able to sit and watch some of the greatest sporting events of all time. I'm a blessed man. But I would pass up any ticket to sit courtside and watch my daughter or my son play basketball. My son's also a competitive golfer. To watch him golf, to watch your kids compete is a dream come true. It's better than actually playing yourself. It's a matter of fact, I'm 10 times more nerve-wracking. So I, I completely understand why he did it. Every fan should understand why he did it. Matt Holiday's a family man. If you know him, he is obsessed with his family. Great dude. I was so happy to watch him have that dad moment last night. Greg, taking a look at the Cardinals, Sonny Gray's debut might have been limited, but he didn't look limited in his capabilities on the mound the other day. What did you see from his first start as a Cardinal? You know, it's weird, Brooke. Every time he got a strikeout, every time he stranded runners and he walked off the mound with zeros on the board, you know what I saw? I saw Randy Carricker's face. All I saw was an image of Randy Carricker who was saying to, to all of us, that I don't think this guy's a number one. I just kept thinking about our dear friend. And as I kept watching him go out there, I know he only pitched five innings. But I hope everyone saw a snapshot of what's to come. He's going to be a great starter for the St. Louis Cardinals. Gamer of a guy. When you meet him, he fits the culture of what Cardinal baseball is about. His tail's wagging when he shows up to the yard, even though he probably got the last big contract of his career. The Cardinals do their homework. I think the way the starting rotation is performing right now is as expected, and it's a, a dramatic improvement over what we saw last year. It's going to be headlined by many more starts from Sonny Gray. That's just one. This is, this is good. This is being executed the way the front office directed would be, and it's going to end up okay in St. Louis. I know you're going to wake up this morning and you're going to see the Cardinal logo at the bottom of the NL Central standings. They're only three and a half games out. They're getting their bearings. There's still some young guys on this opening day roster that are trying to figure it out. This team's talented. They're going to win the Central. Now, uh, Go ahead, Randy. I just want to find out if Greg is surprised that Silvio Martinez hasn't been voted to a red jacket status yet by the Cardinal Oh, my fans. goodness. I see. I swear, Randy, I swear. I mean, this is just, I mean, you have so many weapons in your holster that you can come out and use on the radio. My goodness, man. I, I love I love what Sonny Gray did. I, I, people think that I don't think he's good because I don't think he's Max Scherzer or Justin Verlander or Garrett Cole or Clayton Kershaw. I, I don't think that he is a number one, number one. I don't think he's one of the top four or five aces in the league. That doesn't mean I think he's a bad pitcher. I just think that the Cardinals need a legitimate number one if they're going to win a World Series. I, I, I agree with that. Win a World Series? Yeah, and they need more than just a legitimate number one. I, I think you have to win the marathon before you can talk about the sprint. And if they can get to the trade deadline atop the standings, and now we start to reimagine a few spots in the roster to, to, to compete in October and maybe win a World Series, then you reassess. you got to get there. And this was the smartest way to get there. Now, on the flip side, you got to look at the offense and the lack of production, in particular, Arenado, Goldie, Walker. What are you and the guys on the set seeing with that trio? You know, I'll tell you this, Dan, if the weak links are the three names you just named, I think you're feeling much, much better about it. Uh, I mean, Alon Herrera is a special player, a 23-year-old catcher. He's got to play. And there aren't many catchers that age that get thrown into the middle of the order. And then you see why they're thrown into the middle of the order. Uh, there's a lot to dream on. I, I, look, is Scott going to eventually get it going? Yeah, it was so hard to see him. You know, what happened at first base yesterday, the infield single. It's eventually going to happen. I don't know if he's running out of time with Newt Bard, Edmund on the men, maybe with Dylan Carlson at some point. We'll be back in the mix. I, this is a lineup that we haven't seen click yet, top to bottom. Uh, Donovan's also a terrific start, but we're still waiting on guys. And I, I think that's a good sign. The fact that they're as competitive as they are right now, uh, the biggest bugaboo is what we're going to get from the starting pitching. It looks good early on, in my estimation. I think Ryan Helsley looks better than he's ever thrown uh, lately. He looks terrific. Break, man. I, I, I'm, I'm good. I, I like what I'm seeing from the pen. I like what I'm seeing from the starting rotation overall. And if, if the worry is Goldie and Arenado, that's going to definitely figure itself out. So wait till it's all going in the right direction. 
Cardinal baseball is going to be a dominant force in the Central. I keep saying it. I'm bullish about it but I'm really believing in this roster. Craig, last year the Pittsburgh Pirates got off to a start similar to the one they're off to this year. And then after June, they wound up uh, tanking and and wound up 76 and 86. Are this year's Pirates better than last year's? Yeah, I think they are. Because of the experience they had last year, uh, Derek Sheldon's a great baseball man. He is a terrific manager. Uh, He has a lot of similarities to Torrey Lovella in my eyes. And when the Diamondbacks lost over 100 games, and Mike Hazen was going through all those horrible off-season issues, his wife uh, dying. It was a t- terrible uh, vibe right there with the Arizona Diamondbacks. I kept saying there's no way Troy Lovello gets let go. You can't fire a manager for a, a roster that is not ready to compete yet. And Troy Lovello was a great baseball man, leader of men. I truly believe that he's one of the best in the business, even when they lost over 100 games. I put Derek Sheldon in that same category. I think he's that great of a communicator. And to me, when players know that your manager's got your back and and this guy's on the top step on every pitch and he's ready to to go fight for his guys, I I think he's he's leading them in a a very slow drip direction. Last year was disappointing after the way they started, but because they had that experience and there's so many faces back – from last year's team, and O'Neill Cruz looks like the real deal, by the way. Like, real deal. And Ellie De La Cruz, by the way, in Cincinnati, another gigantic shortstop getting it going again. Another home run yesterday. These two guys are changing the game and what we see and what we dreamt about at short. But Cruz looks like he's here to stay. Uh, Brian Reynolds was a smart, steady Eddie sign to have him locked up for a while. I don't know if Henry Davis is the long-term catcher. That's a question mark. But it, for them, it comes down – to the starting pitching when Paul Skeens debuts, the former number one overall pick. If you're excited about Jackson Holiday and you're a baseball fan, you got to tune in to watch Paul Skeens and easy, easy one on one come out of his hand. I mean, it looks like he's playing long toss when he's on the mound. It is fun to watch this kid pitch. He's on the way. The Pirates are going to be in the mix. I, I had them over 500 when the season started, finishing third in Central. Uh, they're going to have a winning season. This is a team that they're going to, everyone in the Central is going to have to deal with. Greg, I know it's something that you've seen, and it's hard for Cardinals fans to see as well. Other players going on after they leave the organization doing well. Jordan Hicks is rolling as a starter for the Giants, and Tyler O'Neill is just absolutely mashing for the Red Sox. Who do you predict is going to have the most successful season this year? Oh, that's a really good question. I would not be surprised if both of them were in Arlington for the All-Star game. Uh, I, I think overall... Jordan Hicks is just a really unique talent. Uh, the Boston Red Sox have a, a ton of outfield depth, young outfielders. So to me, it, the second Tyler O'Neill goes into a bit of a skid, who knows if they're going to be so loyal to him and they're not going to play one of their many outfielders they have at the AAA level and, and even at the big league level. I, I, I just think Jordan Hicks needed the commitment as a starter, and he got it from a team he never played for, which is mind-boggling to me. But the San Francisco Giants had to think outside the box to rebrand themselves. And they're getting back to what worked when they won three world championships, even though it's a completely different regime. If you go back and look at those teams that were led by Bruce Pochi, yeah, they had Buster Posey. That was a, you know, from the farm system kind of star. They struck it big with him. But it was a bunch of guys that weren't offensive juggernauts. There were no offensive superstars on that team. And they didn't hit many home runs. Matter of fact, one year they won the World Series. They had the fewest home runs in the National League. But they were built on starting pitching and a terrific bullpen. And what you're looking at now, while the Rodgers twins are up to a bit of a slow start, they're the setup guys for the San Francisco Giants, you got to believe in the track record of their pen. And I love what they've done in the starting rotation. Robbie Ray's going to come back at some point. You're going to get Cobb back. And with Jordan Hicks, with this reclamation project of, you know what, we're going to give you a multi-year contract. We believe in you as a starter. The way he's thrown so far through three starts, that contract looks like the bargain of the offseason. Uh, you can't overlook stuff. He always had it. And maybe the best stuff, naturally, of any pitcher in the game. And the Giants were willing to take a risk. And unfortunately, there's so many front offices, including the Cardinals, I hate to say it, that are, are, are risk avoidant. They do not want to roll the dice on anybody because they have so many other options. But I love watching an organization kind of pitch their wagon to somebody's future and, and go and have the accountability to sync with them if it doesn't work. And that's what the Giants do with Juven Hicks. Worst case scenario, you got a flamethrower coming out of the bullpen. I thought it was a brilliant move. He's enjoying it. And I think to answer your question, Jordan Hicks is here to say, and the Cardinals are going to have to watch this guy compete like this for, for a few years. What's the theory going around on Major League Baseball 
as to why there's so many injuries with these starting pitching. Uh, really good guys that are out there, hard throwers, less than hard throwers, just in general, the starting pitching and the, the epidemic that's going on with these guys getting hurt. So I, I know you know this this guy, and he's one of my best friends. I love John Smoltz, Hall of Famer. I call him former Cardinal John Smoltz. And I was on the phone with him yesterday for quite a long time. Uh, apparently he was interviewed by The Athletic, and they're going to do it, have a major write-up. But John went off on this topic, and he cares a lot about this topic. Look, you're right. There are a lot of guys hitting 100 miles an hour, hitting 101, hitting 102. But – there are probably one to five percent of those guys that were literally built that have the DNA to do that. Their body shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so we've got all of this incredible technology off the field to get kids that were never meant to throw 100 miles an hour and will have the the actual tissue, the muscle mass to do it. We're getting them ramped up to do this, to do something they were never meant to do. And they were shocked when their bodies break down. So it, it, I call the regular season a baseball marathon for a reason. There's no sport like it. To have guys compete in a marathon, even if you're pitching every fifth day or you're a bullpen guy and you're not throwing multiple innings, to do it for the span of seven months, to get your body ready to do it at a high level for seven months, you're doing something, throwing a baseball unnaturally in a way that you were never meant to throw that hard. Uh, it, it inevitably you're going to break down. And that's the way John Smoltz looks at this. He's not over-focusing fo- on the pitch clock. He's not over-focusing on the new baseballs. He's not over-focusing on the height of the mound. He's not focusing on anything but the fact that there's an obsession with velocity and spin. And every front office is overflowing with humans that never played. Humans that never played the game. And this is where we've gotten this is the result of, of, a, of a sport that has people that have never played that are valuing people that play monetarily, giving them contracts of what they think is valuable, and pretty much letting the world know what they value and what they think is important. And when it comes to pitching, it's not, it's not length. It's not pitchability. It's not Jordan Montgomery. We want a flamethrower reliever who can go four to five innings and that is going to get you paid. And that doesn't, that's not sustainable. It's not going to work long-term. And if there is a guy that you say he is working long-term, he's probably already had Tommy John or he's about to have a second. So to me, I'm with John Smoltz on this. I think it's an over-fixation on velocity and spin. And we've got to get back to the day where the, the irony of it, someone like Tommy John could walk onto the mound and compete at a big league level. And right now, if a guy like that walked onto a big league mound, you would think it's old timers day at the ballpark. <laughs> That's a real thing. So we've got to get back to a day where someone who can manipulate a baseball to an 80 to 85 miles an hour has a place in our sport. Finally, Greg, before we let you go, I brought up Silvio Martinez earlier. His Cardinal debut, May 30th of 1978 at New York. Six no-hit innings. He only allowed one hit over nine against the Mets. And I believe because of that, he should be fitted for a red jacket, just like Sonny Gray should. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm out. There's a commitment to Sonny Gray, a multi-million dollar commitment. So there was a bit of pressure on his shoulders when he finally made his first start in Cardinal Red. So for him to come out and pitch like that, we should not be joking, Randy. We should be recognizing that the Cardinals made a good decision so far. We'll see how it plays out, but I'm feeling very good about the sunny gray of 2024. I think it's going to be a banner season for him, and I think the Cardinals are going to enjoy their ace, their number one. Sonny Gray. I love your positivity, and he was great. Let's give credit where credit is due. Greg, will be tuned in, as always, when you're on MLB tonight. Thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it, and have a great day. All right, guys. Take care. See you. See you, man. That is uh, the great Greg Amzinger of MLB Network, a native of St. Louis and a product of the Lindenwood University here on 101 ESPN. We've got a quick Teoli coming up. Get your text in 314-399-9646. 314-399-YOHO. Take it or leave it next on 101 ESPN.
Hey, it'll be 80 degrees over the weekend, and you know the warm summer heat is headed our way. And that's why you need to get in touch with Hoffman Brothers to make sure that they make sure that your air conditioner is in great shape for the summer months. You can reach Hoffman Brothers by calling 314-664-3011 or find them on the web and make your appointment there at hoffmanbros.com. When's the last time you changed your air filter? You need to get that done, and Hoffman Brothers will do it. A friendly reminder from them that now's the time to get that tune-up scheduled. Don't wait until it stops working and it's super hot. The maintenance on your air conditioner once a year is just as important as your oil changes in your car. Call today to schedule your appointment at 314-664-3011 or at HoffmanBros.com. Hoffman Brothers are proud. Mitsubishi Electric, elite contractor. And if your air conditioner was having a hard time keeping up last summer, you might need a new one. Well, they'll do a great job of replacing as well. Hoffman Brothers can handle all of your electrical needs, too. They're a great St. Louis company. Heating, cooling, electrical, plumbing, and more. Hoffman Brothers at HoffmanBros.com. And give us your take it or leave it. Brought to you by Gloria Lou Realty. Visit GloriaHasTheBuyers.com and start packing. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. Brooke, Dan, Matthew, and Randy, take it or leave it. Okay, kids, the... Masters will start today, and so far, statistically, this year, and actually for the last couple of years, Scotty Scheffler has been the most dominant statistical golfer, as dominant as Tiger Woods was in his heyday. Take it or leave it. If you were hopping on the fan duel today and betting the Masters, you would bet Scotty Scheffler and give everybody else the field. I'm going to leave that. Mm -hmm. I don't have him winning my Masters oh. pool, so that's why. Okay. Although I do have him in contention. How could you not? I would be stunned if he's not there on Sunday afternoon. Do you want to reveal who you have? I've got Bryson DeChambeau. Oh, oh. that'd be fun. Oh. Yeah, i got Bryson oh, DeChambeau. Okay. So to Randy's point, Scheffler, and just hear me out here, strokes gained T to green per round. He is number one. And to put it in perspective, it is Tiger-esque because the difference between one and two, which is Xander Shoffley, is larger than between number 20 and number 109 in the world. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh I mean, that's yeah. how well he is ball striking right now. If he can putt, he wins the Masters. Yeah, there's no doubt. Yep. And he, you really have to putt well to win the Masters. Absolutely. We just talked with Greg Amsinger about how painful it is to see Jordan Hicks doing so well as a starter for the Giants. He has a one ERA right now, guys. And... My big question, take it or leave it, he will remain a starter for the rest of the season for the Giants. Oh, take that. Take it, yeah. They signed him as a starter. He's doing well as a starter. I think he continues as a starter. Yeah. So, and they're, they're going to get some guys back. They'll get Robbie Ray back. They'll get Alex Cobb back. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's the best starter in the National League right now. So, yeah, he'll, they'll keep him there. I All right. Think. Going back to the Masters, we talk so much about Liv against the PGA Tour. Take it or leave it. Phil Mickelson, Liv, will finish ahead of Tiger Woods. Patrick Reed will finish ahead of Justin Thomas. And Bryson DeChambeau will finish ahead of Scotty Scheffler. So I got Liv guys doing some damage here. Ooh. I'm going to leave that last one. I, I don't. 
think that Tiger makes the cut. I think there's a chance that Phil does. I, I think Phil does finish ahead of Tiger. And uh, P. Reed and Justin Thomas. Yeah. Uh, JT's been playing a little bit better, but I, uh, th- this course sets up for Patrick Reed. So I, I was going to go take Reed. it for that. Yeah. yeah. Just not the last part. Makes it fun. You got some it villains is. out there. It Patrick is. Reed is number one on my list. Oh, Captain America. <laughs> you betcha. Yeah. All right, Matthew, what do we got? So you're saying Phil's going to have a better round than Tiger? All right, just make, taking some notes over here. Uh, Did you t- see Phil's last nine at the Masters last year? It was like a 32. Yeah, uh, but I'm, I'm looking on uh, my underdog. and oh, okay. Uh, right now you can get um, Tiger at uh, plus or minus or higher or lower 73 and a half strokes today and Phil at 74 and a half wow. strokes. Wow. So I'm going to take the, the uh, lower on Phil's 74 and a half. Take it or leave it. Walker and Scott are gone when Newton Carlson are back. You can't have two automatic outs in the lineup. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. They already made the corresponding move. Pedro yeah. Pajes. Mm-hmm. Pedro Pajes, yep, he goes down to the minor leagues. It's going to be interesting, though, is what you do with Victor Scott once, not only Newpar, but when you get Tommy Edmond back and you get Dylan Carlson. I think that's yeah. when it gets really interesting with the last two I just mentioned. I'm kind of concerned about when they get Tommy Edmond back. What, what are you going to get? Yeah, well, and when? Yeah, you know, June 1st? I could... Well, we're pretty close. It's April 11th now, so that's you got to figure he's going to be game ready. Maybe in a he hadn't even uh, he's allowed to hit right, but or swing, but not hit. Mm-hmm. So when's he allowed to hit? And then he needs he didn't have any spring training. He had, didn't have an off season at all. So when's he going to be ready? I'd say a two week rehab assignment, and then if he feels good and is hitting well, he gets maybe a, a jump ahead of where we're talking about right now. But I'm with you, Randy. I think it's going to take a while. I yeah. think the biggest concern is that it just continues to be setback after setback, and you keep hearing of the lingering pain. Yeah, it's, that's that's it's not good. Concern, right. I think I'm in the minority here. I didn't think, and I'm probably wrong, but I didn't think Victor Scott should have been out at first base yesterday when he went past past the bag. You have I to agree. make a commitment going towards second base. Now that commitment could be. A half step and kind of a jab step going towards second. Yeah, you're in fair territory. You're out. I, I didn't see that. I, I didn't. I didn't think he should have been out. I agree, but I think sometimes umpires like to make a point with young players. Mm. <laughs> Maybe so. And I, I could definitely see that. Although the reaction of everybody, everybody there was like, "Yeah, you did it." There yeah. was no well, did one step, but he did it. Yeah. yeah. Also, in fairness to that texture, he did mention Carlson as like, and I, I, I guess as their thought process is, if you get Carlson and Newbar and you have two guys who can play center field, then you maybe go back and you rearrange the roster or Scott's then get sent down because of that depth there. As soon as yeah. Edmonds up there, then yeah. it's, yeah, all holes bars. Uh, take it or leave it. Killing Mbappe or Erling Haaland one day wear City Red? Totally take it. I'm Mbappe. going to leave that. Randy, leave that, that. that would be like your Sonny Gray. I mean, if you got Mbappe. Mbappe, yeah. You know. <laughs> no, that'd be like getting, uh, it'd be like uh, having Otani on my team. It'll cost you about half a billion, too. I'd get a, I, I would get a kit. I would contribute to the cause. You already have one. Well, but I, I would get an Mbappe kit. Oh. Uh, for them to sign Mbappe, that kit's going to cost you $2,800. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, and everyone, everyone you said that's the, fine. Everyone in the city is going to have to buy I'll, one. I'll even get socks and boots there you and go. shorts okay, and everything. Do that's they call them shorts? Uh, or is that just part of the kit? I can't imagine what the else they'd call it. Jumper? That's a British thing. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think it might be a shirt. One more. Uh, take your leader. Cards get to 90 wins if they stay healthy. Leave it. Leave it. I'm going to leave it. I think this is who they are. Yeah. Even with the lack of offense. Mm-hmm. I just had them around a 500 team. Yeah. And 500 yeah. is going to be fine enough. Like it or not, in the Central Division. I'm with you. I think 81, 82 wins. And you know what? They all they already haven't stayed healthy. Yes. <laughs> so we have to take There's that into consideration. There's more to come. Yeah, there, there Just are. Just the way baseball is. <laughs> Thanks so much for your text. We do appreciate it. Coming up is playing the last two National League championship champions, Philly and Arizona, a referendum on how good the Cardinals are. That's next on 101 ESPN.
perspective on the day's top stories. It's the Opening Drive's Fresh Take. in St. Louis. Time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler, Bernie Federko. Coming up in our next segment, the Cardinals just dropped two of three to the defending, uh, well, the 2022 National League champion, Philadelphia Phillies. Now they take on the defending National League champion, Arizona Diamondbacks. Philadelphia, a different looking team than they were two years ago, obviously, because they've added Trey Turner and they've changed their starting pitching around. Also, although we did see the guys that beat the Cardinals in the playoffs a couple of years ago and Arizona is going to be interesting, although they don't have the guys that they got to enhance their chances again in 2024 because Eduardo Rodriguez and Jordan Montgomery have yet to pitch. But that being said, you do have the last two National League champions. Is this... A referendum on how good the Cardinals can or should be, or is this just typical April baseball? Here's the thing is that it's better than what I thought that they were going to do, especially when you looked at that early portion of the schedule. You were able to take one away from the Dodgers, and they could have actually taken another there. But then with the Padres, for them to do that, and then you win back-to-back series against the Padres, then the Marlins, and I would have liked to be able to see them close out that series finale with the Phillies, but there were some self-inflicted mistakes that they made there that cost them the game. I think if you're looking for some positives, and this is what I wanted to see, is this team better defensively this season? Because last season was so uncharacteristic of the Cardinals defensively that it just added to the big pile of things that were wrong with them. Defensively, they look way better. They're second in the league in double plays per game and first in the National League in that category as well. And they look really good. The bullpen now scratch Palante, of course, as we talked earlier. The bullpen does look better. I love the addition of Andrew Kittred. We talked about how adding that veteran presence really just anchors that bullpen. And another positive is I'm excited to see what Sunday Gray looks like without a pitch count. Now, the big concerns are your big guys. Paul Goldschmidt, we talked about what he's not able to do right now, and Nolan Arnato. I understand that you need your younger players to really rise to the occasion, which players like Yvonne Herrera have been able to do, and I'm talking about offensively, but the brunt of that really should be coming from your big guys and Nolan Arnato and Paul Goldschmidt, and I have some concerns there. I would say in the Philly series, it's a better look than what it was last year and the Dodger series as well. Now, you lost both of those. So let me let me preface everything by saying you either do or you don't. Yes. You know, you either win or you don't. But they battled. So you had the extra innings game uh, in game one of the series with the Phillies. You beat Wheeler three to nothing. That is something that is significant in my mind. And you had a tight game yesterday, barring the airs against Aaron Nola. So they battled. I mean, they they shown at least as opposed to what they had last year a chance to win these games. And again, you didn't. That it comes down to you, did you win or did you lose? And they didn't. Um, but it's it's better than it was a year ago. And and if you can hang around with some of these teams and hang around in some of these games, you're going to win those. Last year they did not. Um, but it comes down to the offense getting going. And we're only 13 what 13 games into the season. Mm-hmm. They're six and seven. But there are some signs that I would say, and they're not healthy. I mean, they're they're missing some of their guys that uh, they're going to count on every day. It's better. Is does it need? Is it where it needs to be? No. But is it better than what it was a year ago? I'd say yeah. And last year, they uh, let's see after they'd be blown out of some of these games. Yeah, after thirteen games, they were five and eight. But to your point, Dan, they they were getting blown out or at the very best allowing a bunch of runs they, they allowed 10 runs in their opener last year they haven't allowed double digits in a game yet this year but they they'd lost games eight to four four to nothing six to one seven to four they they won a game nine to six so they were allowing a ton of runs last year and i think the biggest change that the cardinals had made is the obvious one in getting gibson lynn and gray and their starting pitching has been better. But the other part of it is, is that their bullpen has been reasonably solid so far, too. And I, I'm one that looks bigger picture. I, I, I'm i not going to judge players that have been around for a decade on 13 games. Sure, you're, you're concerned, but I, I'm, I'm much more of a big picture 
a viewership guy when I, when I talk about offense. And hopefully those guys will rise to the level that they've shown over it's old Goldschmidt, Arnato, that they have shown over the course of their careers and not what they've shown over two weeks. Goldie is just 5 of 40 since he had his three hits on opening day. And I do get that. I feel like we've seen statistically, especially for him early on throughout his entire career, that it takes him a little bit to warm up. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to see. It's just hard to watch right now when you know that offensively, the possibility of what this team can do and they're not able to accomplish that right now. The thing is, too, like in the Phillies series, the Phillies on the flip side, look at it from their perspective. They found ways to win those games. Yeah. And they came in and they're now hitting 180 with runners in scoring position. So they've, they've got their issues, too. The back end of their bullpen hasn't been great at times, but they found ways to win. And if you're a championship team or a winning team, you find those ways to win those games like you had at uh, the homestand with the Phillies. And to that point, if the Cardinals can go and win two out of three against Arizona and you play 500 against the last two National League champions, then I think it does say something about your ball club. It really does. And when, to your point, Dan, it felt like last year you were waiting for them to manufacture some runs in any way possible, find some way to win, and at least show some aggressiveness so that is a positive to see from this group early on so one start from Sonny Gray missing Edmund Newpar missing two key bullpen arms Middleton O'Brien and you are under 500 you're six and seven that's okay I mean it's early in the season you're showing a competitive nature to this team which is something I, I just wanted to see in a general sense we can break down all the numbers you want but in a general sense I want to see them be competitive but again you either do or you don't they're gonna have to win some of these games that's today's fresh take Bernie Federko the Hall of Famer joins us next year on 101 ESPN All right, no Blues, no Cardinals tonight, but we do have the Masters starting, and the best way to play is with Underdog Fantasy. While you're watching the Masters today, put a little Pick'em product in with their Pick'em champions. Pick two to five players from at least two different teams. Select higher or lower on the player's stats. Select your entry fee. You're going to be entered alongside other Underdogs. As long as you hit your entries, you're going to be walking away with your winnings. Like I said, no Cardinals, no Blues, so let's put together a little bit of a Masters one. We're going to go lower than, on Phil Mickelson, 74 and a half strokes in this first 
round. We're going to go higher than Rory 71, and then we're going to go higher on Scotty Scheffler. He's got an early tee time, and so he's going to be facing some of this weather. We're going to go higher than three and a half bogeys for him in this round. That's a scorcher. It's going to take your odds up even higher on that entry. All the ways to play again. If you want to play some NBA, you can as well. Always different ways to play some non-Cardinals, some non-Blues, NHL, and MLB. All the games available for you on Underdog Fantasy. Underdog, it's super easy to play and even easier to get started. You just go to their easy-to-use mobile app or to underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with promo code ROCC, and Underdog will match your first deposit up to $100. Plus, they'll give you a mystery special pick to use on your first pick -em. That's Underdog Fantasy. Promo code ROCK to get your first deposit of $10 or more up to $100. Match plus your special pick. Must be 18 plus and present in state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Because really, your play call when it hurt gambler. Or visit www.ncbgambling.org. Presented by Boardwalk Hardwood Floors, a proud partner of your St. Louis Blues. Find your perfect new floor at our four convenient locations and online at BoardwalkHardwood.com. Rick Grimsley, Dan McLaughlin, Randy Carricker. Great to have you with us on the opening drive on 101 ESPN. The Hall of Famer Bernie Federko joins us. Of course, he's a Blues analyst on Bally Sports. Good morning, Bernie. How are you doing? Good morning, Randy. I'm doing great, thanks. Good. Okay, you are one of the nicest people in the world, but tell me this, in your heart of hearts, do you just love seeing the Blues crush the Blackhawks? <laughs> I think everybody does. I think that's just always the way it's been. Uh, it's been. It goes back such such a long way. I Actually, right now, I kind of feel sorry for the Hawks right now. It's hard to say that, but uh, that was a pretty miserable performance by them last night. Uh, they've got a long way to go. They're rebuilding, I know, but... Uh, uh, that was pretty ugly for them, and uh, hey, I guess it looks good on the Hawks. <laughs> and you know what? They, they, they've had their share of good good times. Bernie, that, that was their fiftieth loss of the year. That's just in an eighty-two game schedule. It's amazing to think that that was loss number fifty for them. I know fifty, and they can't score goals. And I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't think I don't know the the last time Randy there where I watched the game where the first four shots on goal went in. Uh, I don't know, and that doesn't happen very, very often. But uh, yeah, they're they're they're. I mean, they've been shut out 13 times this year, and uh, I guess I mean they've had a lot of injuries as well. They've had a lot of guys out of out of the lineup in and out of the lineup. So I mean, when you look at the Blues, uh, what we've lost 42 man games, and they've lost 340 man games. So it makes a big difference when you're not a healthy team. But uh, uh, you know what? We, we we get to 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 laugh. Unfortunately, we don't get to laugh enough because. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, are we going to be able to, you know, try to kind of make something almost impossible out happen and win the last three games and see L.A. and and uh, and Vegas lose so that we can maybe get a playoff spot? But, uh, hey, it is what it is. We just have to continue to, to watch what happens. Well, Bernie, as you mentioned, with the win last night for the Blues and the Vegas loss last night, they're still alive in this thing. Are you surprised that they're still alive considering it seems like they were starting to turn the page with some of the younger players coming in and you're dealing with some injuries right now. Jake Neighbors day to day, Justin Falk out likely for the rest of the season. Are you surprised that they're still alive in this? 
Well, not really, Brooke. I mean, when you look at the schedule, I mean, they should have. I mean, these these last few games. I mean, they should have won. I mean, they ended up getting a point in in, in San Jose, but they they beat San Jose or lost to San Jose in, in overtime. They did get a point, but they beat Anaheim. They beat Chicago. I mean, those are the games that I expect them to to win. I mean, uh, those teams are the lowliest teams in the league, so you expect that to win. But um, you know, I'm surprised that uh, what's been going on with with both both uh, well, especially Vegas. I mean, Vegas has really, really struggled. I know they get some people out of the lineup, but, I mean, uh, you know, they went into uh, uh, Arizona last week and they gave, what, six goals up in the third period and ended up losing that game. They had a 4-1 lead. You give up six goals and lose 7-4 to four in Arizona, and then they lost in Vancouver, lost at Edmonton last night. Uh, no Connor McDavid last night for Edmonton. They still lost 5-1 to one or what it was. So that's the team that's surprising me right now because, I mean, they're the defending Stanley Cup champs. Uh, but I think the bad news for, for Blues fans is that uh, both L.A. and Vegas have got four games left each, and they're, all four of them are home for each team. So I mean, that's going to make, make it very difficult for the Blues. But, um, you know, the Blues, I, I give them a lot of credit. They're, they continue to fight. They get, the young kids are, are getting involved. And uh, this is still it's playoff crunch hockey. They're not in the playoffs right now. But uh, I think the pressure is on, and, and I think this is a good learning process. What are you seeing out of the Blues offensively? And I, I asked that, Bernie, because they've scored five goals for the second straight game, fifth time in the last ten games. What are you seeing in the difference with what they're doing offensively? Well, Danny, I think it's the, the competition that they're against. I mean, you're playing against Anaheim, you're playing against Chicago. Both teams don't defend very well, so I think that's part of the reason the offense there. But, I mean, I think Robert Thomas went through a spell where he, he struggled. Uh, the last couple of games, he's, he's kind of come through. I mean, Kyrie the same way, but I think it's more against the competition that they're that they're against that, that you're able to score goals. But um, you know, right now, I mean, Bannister has been kind of mixing up and matching the lines and trying different combinations. And I mean, Shen back on the left side with Thomas is uh, with Bull Duke. That that line has played very well. I mean, Kyrie's kind of kind of come all alive a little bit, shooting the puck, and getting his opportunities, but. Uh, you know, offense is, is a crazy thing. It's 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 kind of confidence. You score a goal early, or you get involved early, and all of a sudden you get a good scoring chance. It goes in, and I think you get more adrenaline. You you, you keep up the scoring. So uh, whatever it is, I, I can't can't really put my foot on. I wish I could put my finger on it and tell them tell tell every team what you have to do to score every night. But it it's just kind of a funny thing. You, you, you go through peaks and valleys, and right now uh, with some of the guys, they're they're just on a peak. Bernie, on the flip side, last night was Joel Hofer's 26th start. He's been great. 2.72 goals against, a 9.14 save percentage. Are you sold on Joel Hofer now as an NHL goalie? Yeah, he's he's done a great job. You know, for a rookie season, uh, I, I think that he's still probably going to have to learn some some a, a few things. I mean, he handles the puck very well. Uh, I think last night he was a little over aggressive coming into the net a number of times. Uh, making the plays up there, and I think that's something that you can't do every each and every night. But uh, I, I am sold on him. I, I think that uh, uh, the tandem that the Blues have right now with Bennington may be the best in, in the NHL. Uh, both guys are, are, are can be very very uh, steady. Uh, they don't allow uh, what I would call the goals that that kind of get everybody on their head on the bench to they put their heads down because oh here we go again. Can't believe uh, that we we're seeing a goal like that. So I mean, uh, but Joel has has, has been. Absolutely outstanding, and, and uh, I can't. I mean, I've been talking about Bennington all season long. So uh, the goaltending on this team is 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 very solid uh, for for the future. Bernie, I asked my two co-hosts this question yesterday, and I'll ask it to you because you're a Hall of Famer and you know what a winning team looks like. If you could add one element to this team, doesn't have to be a player, but one element to this team to get them over the hump, what would it be? Oh boy, I, I think that uh, a big uh, defenseman, a, a defenseman that that, that uh, can, can kind of control. Um, I don't know what I what, what I want to call it, but like a, a, a Norse a Norse Trophy kind of defenseman, a, a guy like a, a Yossi or a, or a Makar or somebody like that. I think would be would would do wonders for this hockey club. Uh, you know what? And I and I'd like to see. I'm just going to add somebody. I'd like to see. Uh, you know, some more physical players. A couple of guys that kind of have, have have an edge. Uh, that can still score, but uh, you know this is a team that 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 I think that uh, is is now starting to to believe in each other, and and uh, I think it's little pieces that are interchangeable that that, that can can have an effect. 
but certainly having uh, a defenseman that, that, that really can light it up and, and kind of take control of the game, uh, I think that uh, the teams that have that type of defenseman are the teams that really, really kind of seem to shine. Bernie, three games left tomorrow. The Blues take on the Carolina Hurricanes over at Enterprise Center, and uh, we will be tuned in. Thank you so much for the time. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. You have a great weekend and great Masters weekend. It's always the most fun. It will be great, no doubt about it. You enjoy it, too. Take care. Uh, all right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. It is interesting that uh, it, it, we don't need to mince words. The Blues need, need Alex Petrangelo. <laughs> <laughs> or that nice. type of player. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'd be pretty good. Yep. And kind of a difference maker. And just some rugged guys, the physical yeah. nature, chippy kind of players, the, the cliches that you hear, but that's what they need, in my opinion. The, we were talking about it yesterday, and that's what I want to see. The word rugged applies perfect. perfect. It's a perfect yep. word for this. Right now, who is the most rugged player for the Blues? It's Tucker. It's Tyler Tucker. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. I think you could put Torbchenko sometimes up there. Yeah, but Tucker will scrap. That's the difference. You need more of that. I think if yeah. you're the Blues, too, you're hoping, even though it's going to be a 30-goal season, it looks like for Cairo, mm -hmm. and Thomas is going to ascend in goal scoring, which is great. And I think that that's what you have to look at, too, to supplement some of the offense that maybe is lacking in other areas. They kind of pick it up again. Um, but just a, a rugged back-end guy. A number one of you now mm -hmm. how hard is it to find a number one it's really hard yeah it is <laughs> so uh, but that's the kind of player that i'd love to see them get and i think edmonton who's actually played this year i, I don't know if edmonton is the guy you know we've gone back to the future already with blay and with uh with sunquist but edmonton was that guy five years ago and he's not old yet i don't know if he's the guy but a player like he was in 2019 well you had a combination of players you had sunny who you knew was willing to go out there and put up a fight you also had robert bortuzzo who was doing a lot better at that time he was a threat out there you had a lot more guys like that maroon. on the team. oh maroon yeah yeah so yeah you could use edge you could definitely use that i like rugged yeah, it's a good good word for it. <laughs> it's the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Coming up, we've got the fight, and we need a fighter. 314-399-9646. 314-399-YOHO. Just text into that number with your name and the word fight, and maybe Matthew will pick you to fight me next on 101 ESPN. I guess that's fair.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. Last night, the Blues with a big win, 5-2 to two over the Blackhawks. That keeps them alive in the playoff race. They will not be in action today. They will have a game against the Hurricanes down at Enterprise Center on Friday night, 7 p.m. puck drop. If you want to do some scoreboard watching, the Kings do play the Flames late, late tonight on the NHL slate. For the Cardinals, they lose yesterday early to the Phillies, 4-3. to three. They will also have an off day today before they face off against the Diamondbacks in Arizona starting tomorrow in a three-game series. Friday's first pitch is set for 840. That is your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling, an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. to the opening drive. Brooke, Dan, and Rock here, and it is time for the fight. And our fighter today is Tom. Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys today? We're doing good. Is this your first time in fa- uh, Excuse me, facing Randy in the fight? It sure is. I've tried a bazillion times. This is the first <laughs> time I've been successful. All right. How are you feeling going into it? Uh, skeptical. <laughs> You're not Randy's the only the one. Cookie. <laughs> a lot of people say that. They have a lot of skepticism on their own uh, chances to beat Randy. So have a lot of confidence. Get the puck deep. Get in the greasy areas. Give 110, <laughs> and you'll be just fine. I'll give it a Tyler Tucker try. That's there what I want to hear. Go. We like that. We like the scrappiness. All right, you ready for question number one, Tom? Let's do it. Happy birthday to former Cardinal Pete Cosma. In which playoff series did Cosma log the game-winning RBI hit in the ninth inning? Was it the 2012 NLDS versus the Nationals, the 2013 NLCS versus the Dodgers, or the 2014 NLDS versus the Dodgers? The great Pete Cosma. Um, 2014. So you're going with C, the third option? That's correct. See. Okay. Which NBA franchise starting in a different city and with a different name than it has currently is the oldest continuously operating franchise in NBA history? The Lakers, the Kings, or the Clippers? I do not watch the NBA. Mm. Uh, let's go with the Lakers. Final answer? Final answer. Question three. There have been 87 Masters champions, 63 representing the United States. Which country ranks second with six wins across four winners? Is it Spain, South Africa, or England? South Africa. Wow, that was quick. You feel confident? Are you a golf fan? I am a golf fan, and I don't know that for a fact, but it sure seems like I've heard South Africa a lot. Okay. Here's the final question. When Cardinals legend Enos Slaughter was traded to the Yankees, which eventual Rookie of the Year winning outfielder did the Cardinals receive? Was it Wally Moon, Bake McBride, or Bill Verdon? Man, these are tough today, man. I think Wally Moon was way after, you know, Slaughter, but I'm not positive of that. What were the other two choices? Bake McBride and Bill Verdon. B. Bake McBride. All right, let me go grab Randy. How Have are a nice you feeling? conversation with uh, Brooke. <laughs> You're stuck with not me. Well. I'm sorry, Tom. How are you feeling? Not good. Not good? Were you looking for anything in particular? No, I like baseball questions, but I sure didn't feel good about that one (sighs) yeah i know he put in an nba question and a master's question it's like rock knows this stuff he Uh, knows um the nba question is an american history question thank you very much oh my gosh okay anyways randy's back in the room now randy say hi to tom tom good morning how you doing doing well sir how are you doing great thanks for listening thanks for playing you ready for question number one randy ready Happy birthday to former Cardinal Pete Cosma. In which playoff series did Cosma log the game-winning RBI hit in the ninth inning? Game-winning RBI hit in the ninth playoff series. Uh, Game-winning hit. I'm going to go with that uh, 2012 game against the uh, Nationals. 
All right, you ready for question two? I am. Which NBA franchise, starting in a different city and with a different name than it has currently, is the oldest continuously operating franchise in NBA history? Oldest continuing franchise in NBA history. That's right. Uh, Dan, I think I'm going to go with the Rochester Royals. Uh... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with them, who are now the Sacramento Kings. I'm going to go with that one. I was going to say, which turned into the Sacramento <laughs> Kings. Cincinnati Royals, Kansas City Omaha Kings, uh, Sacramento Kings. All I'm right. I'm going to go with them. <laughs> Final answer? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about uh, Clippers, Buffalo Braves, but I think the Braves were kind of an expansion team. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to go with the Clippers. I'm going to go with the uh, the Sacramento Kings. On to question three. There have been 87 Masters champions, 63 representing the United States. Which country ranks second with six wins across four winners? This is an American history question, huh? Six. Yeah, they're both American history questions. Just a good point. We okay, love good. American history. Uh, six wins for a country, huh? Um, I think I'm going to go with Spain. I'm going to go with uh, John Rahm. You had Seve. You had, uh, uh, there was another Spaniard that I'm thinking. Oh, uh, uh, had three names. Yeah, Olathebel. That's it. That's Olathebel's guy. I'm going to go with Spain. All right, question four. When Cardinals legend Enos Slaughter was traded to the Yankees. Uh-huh, the Junkies. Uh-huh. <laughs> which eventual Rookie of the Year winning outfielder did the Cardinals receive? Ooh. Okay, so this is good. I'm going to go eventual Rookie of the Year winning outfielder. Uh, Enos Slaughter. So I wonder. It's got to be one of two guys. I'm going to go with Wally Moon. I'm going to go with Moon over Verdon. Is that your final answer? Yeah, it is. Okay. You didn't seem real confident in I'm that I'm not one. confident in it. No, because I know I know Verdon came up through, he was like a local guy, came yep. up through the organization. I kind of thought Moon did too, but maybe they got him in the, in the trade. I don't know. Uh, I'm just guessing. Well, let's find out. Huh? Let's do that, yeah. All right, we have a winner in today's fight. We're going to find out the answers after I tell you guys the winner. Was it Tom and his first shot ever at Megamind? Or does Megamind bounce back from a loss earlier in the week with another win today? Can I add something here before you sure, start? Sure, go for it. How stupid not to take the lifeline there. Okay, go ahead. You had a lifeline left. You did, you're right. <laughs> it's uh, too late now. Matt <laughs> Bell. The winner and still champion of the fight, Randy Carricker. The fight is presented by Golf Discount of St. Louis with the most experienced club fitters in town. Why shop anywhere else? Well, Randy, because you didn't take the options, we probably didn't play. Uh, didn't get to hear Mr. Buck today because I you got three out of uh, four correct. And Tom and, and Tommy skunked you. He beat you three to zero today. Yeah, I figured I laid an egg when I heard Randy's answer. Yeah, I mean, you can also, I, you listen, just you go around to everyone and you don't say, I didn't lay egg, rock laid an egg with the questions. That's the, You got that always in your pocket, rock laid an egg with the questions. I, that's what I use. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for admitting it. I'm going to put that on wax and cut it off and go to sleep to it. Make me feel, so feel better. Happy birthday to former Cardinal Pete Cosmet. It was, in fact, the ninth inning of the game of the series clinching game where Pete Cosmet logged his uh, RBI hit in the ninth inning for the 2012 win over the Nationals in the NLDS. It is, in fact, the Kings, the longest continuous continuously operating franchise in NBA history. They started as a semi-pro team in 1923 in Rochester, and they went through all those moves that we talked about last week. Uh, 87 Masters champions, 63 representing the United States, America, F, yeah. Which country ranks second with six wins across four wins? So 63 down to six. It is, in fact, Spain, and you got it exactly right. Sevi Ballesteros has two. Uh, Olafabel has two, and then you have Rom and Sergio and Bang Sergio, Bang yep. to get to six total oh, for Spain. Okay, let me do the lifelines here. Uh, oh, for the last one. Uh, Wally Moon, <laughs> Bake McBride, or Bill Verdon? Okay, yeah. I would have gone so with you, Moon. You had two. You yeah. 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 Um, in fact, the local guy did not start with the Cardinals. Bill Verdon was actually acquired from mm. the, the Yankees in the trade for Enos Slaughter. Here's the crazy thing about Verdon. He wins Rookie of the Year one year after Wally Moon wins it. And despite the fact that he's from Missouri, he went to Drury University. They ship him off to the Pirates. 
Yeah. And then he, and and that just breaks my heart because he even he even moves. Back, I was reading his bio. He even moves back to like the KC side of the mm-hmm. state and passes away there too. Like Missouri in his bones wins the rookie of the year with the Cardinals and then gets shipped off to the Pirates for the rest of his career. That's a rough one for Bill Vernon, but uh, a, a good one for Randy Day as he wins three to go. Tom, thank you so much for winning the fight and or joining the fight and joining the show today. It'll take an hour for these Thank you, Tom. Uh, <laughs> he was already he was already hop- one time hopping off to some yeah, other business when Bill Vernon was managing the Houston Astros, he was out with a liver issue, and he was away from the team. And Jack Buck is on the air with Mike Shannon explaining why Bill Verdon is out. He said, yeah, he's got problems with his liver, and uh, we wish him back soon. And Mike says to Jack, how's your liver? And Jack said, it's pickled and it's there forever. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, on him being a local guy who was playing with the Yankees, the Yankees held an open tryout in Branson, Missouri, and they signed him for uh, $2,000. Wow. wow. Yeah, there was a Yankee scout there, and he signed him for $2,000. And so he didn't get drafted or anything. That's why he was in the Yankee system, though. You know, they even did uh, open tryouts like in the 80s yeah. for players. It'll never happen again because there's just no room, not enough room in the minor leagues. But that used to be how much teams would comb the the landscape to try to find a major league player. Think about how Red Shandings did. Yeah, arrived in St. Louis bus stop to have a chance to try out. I right. mean, it's it's amazing some of the stories of the older players yeah. and the money. You talk about the or two train thousand. stop, I should yeah. say. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the fact that and uh, Brooke and I, if you have a chance to see the Yogi Berra documentary, check it out. But oh, so the fact good. that Yogi wanted the same bonus that Joe Garagiola got from the Cardinals. Joe got five thousand dollars. They offered Yogi twenty five hundred. He wanted five thousand from the Cardinals. The Cardinals wouldn't budge. And he goes to the Yankees, where they gave him, they, they did give him five thousand. Think about if Yogi Bear and Sam Musial would have been on the same team for like fifteen years. Pretty phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Pretty phenomenal. It really would have. And it's on Netflix if you want to go watch yeah, that it's, documentary. It's really good. Really well done. Uh, all right, that's the fight on 101 ESPN. Coming up, we're going to talk to Robert Thomas about the Big Blues win last night. Robert Thomas is, I'm, I was going to go nickname, but I'm He not. just likes Robert Thomas. He's, he's going to go Robert he's Thomas. Very, and if, when, when you score as many that. points as he has, he gets to be called what he wants. That's next on 101 ESPN.
Brooke Grimsley, Dan McLaughlin, Randy Carricker, the opening drive on 101 ESPN. And we go to the celebrity line and a blues center, Robert Thomas, joins us as he does every week. On the heels of the Blues 5 to win over the Blackhawks last night at Enterprise Center. Robert, good morning. How are you doing? Doing well, guys. Thanks. I would imagine that you're hoping for what we'll call, we're calling it here a miracle, but maybe the, the Hail Mary. But you got to win your last three to make the playoffs. How do you feel about it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's obviously, um, you know, we all know it's a long shot. Um, you know, just looking at the standings and stuff, but, um, you know, you're never out to your out. And, um, you know, we got a lot of pride and, and character in our room and, um, kind of no matter the circumstances, we, we're going to give it our best and, and try and win all three. Robert, some of the younger players getting some more ice time here recently, including Bull Duke getting some top line minutes with you and Shin last night. His first multi point affair of his NFL, uh, NHL, excuse me, career. What have you seen in his progression? Yeah, um, you know, I think he's obviously got a ton of skill. Um, you know, that's what got him drafted so high, and uh, he can score goals, make plays, and. I think I've been most impressed with is he's skating really well. He's defending hard. He's, you know, he's mature with the puck. He's making smart plays. And um, I think that's something that he's developed, um, you know, down in the minors. And I, I like that he's come up and brought that with confidence. And um, I think he's doing an excellent job. Robert, I know that you love hockey. You always watch it. You study the history of this sport. Uh, you're the first blue to record 83 or more points since Pavel Dimitra, who was such a great player uh, here in St. Louis. And it has to go all the way back to 02, 03 season. When I say that and, and you hear that, what does that mean to you? Yeah, it's a, it's a cool accomplishment. I think, uh, you know, I feel like I got a lot more to give and uh, I'm excited for the future as well. What else do you have to give? What, what what would you like to do more of? Um, I think there's a bunch of things. Um, you know, I think I can be a strong 200 foot player. I think I could still improve on that, um, as well as a better power play player. Uh, I think that'll be a big step for me as well. Um, but yeah, I think uh, you know this. You, you don't really know what your ceiling is, and I'm a, I'm excited to find out. Hey, Robert, when we when we hear that from you, we know that you work with people during the off season, and you work with the greats, and you've worked worked with one of the best that we ever had in the Blues uniform in Adam Oates. But how much how much video do you use when you do, and you watch people like uh, Gretzky or maybe the best Blue uh, passer in Bernie Federico or guys like Oates or contemporaries like Connor McDavid, who's there for a hundred uh, assists? How much do you use video? Video to improve yeah uh, I would say a lot um, I'd say use more more modern players um, just in the game just always changing so much mm -hmm. but um, yeah I think you watch a guy like Panarin you watch a guy like Kucherov um, those are guys that uh, obviously McDavid flies around at 150 miles an hour um, I can't do that <laughs> <laughs> so I try and stick with you know things that I can, I can do and uh, I think those are two guys that I watch a lot um, just the way they, they handle the puck, the way they enter the zone and, um, you know, set up plays. I think uh, those are things I can do. You guys really set the tone early last night. Four goals on the first four shots of the game. Jordan Cairo with back-to-back -back goals 42 seconds apart. It seems like he's really heating up here recently. What are you seeing from him? Yeah, it's exciting. Um, you know, this is the, the player we, we always know and see. And, um, you know, the last 10 games or so, he's been, he's been on it and, um, that's uh, really promising and exciting to see him back to his old ways. Robert, you get a goal uh, from the first shot, then another shot, and there's a goal, and then another shot, and there's a goal, and then there's <laughs> another shot, and there's a goal. You ever been in part, uh, a part of a game like that with four shots, four goals to start uh, to start a game? No, I don't think I have, actually. Uh, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty exciting. And what's it like on the bench? What are you guys doing when this is, is happening? What's the reaction? Uh... I, I feel like we thought we could have got 12 goals that game. Um, <laughs> obviously, it doesn't doesn't work out like that usually, but um, you know that's the feeling we had. Hey, Robert, I, I mentioned your buddy uh, Connor McDavid. How incredible is he? And we we've talked to, about, to you about playing against him, but the, as a fan, do you ever just sit back and marvel at what he's able to do? Yeah, um, even playing against them. I mean. Um, that assist he had when we were up 2-1 was ridiculous. Um, 
the way he picked up the puck off the wall and spun around and then, you know, cut to the net and slipped it through two of us. Like that play was pretty crazy. So, um, sometimes you just got to tip your cap and it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. Now I know that you guys are obviously very busy and focused right now, but are you a big fan of the masters and are you going to be checking that out? Yeah, I'm a huge golf fan. So, uh, I'm pretty excited for, for this weekend. I know it got delayed this morning. I was looking forward to watching the start, but, um, I'm, I'm really pumped for the masters best weekend. So who do you have? Who do you have winning? Uh, I got a couple guys. Um, I, I really like Xander Shoffley. I think he's due. Um, but I think he might have a good run at it. Well, we'll find out. You didn't mention Scotty Scheffler, so that's that's uh, out of the box. I like it. You're doing a little out of the box thinking here. Yeah, I mean, Scotty almost wins every single tournament, so uh, that's that's the cop out answer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Robert, one week left in the season, and this season certainly has been one kind of a roller coaster ride for you guys. Has this season gone fast for you, with even with all the stuff that's happened during the season? Yeah, uh, seasons always go pretty quick. I think the more and more you you play and get as you get later in your career, um, you know the seasons just keep going by quicker and quicker. And um, yeah, I mean, been a been a roller coaster, but um, a lot of positives still to take from this year. And hopefully more. Just put your head down, win the last three, including tomorrow night against the Hurricanes at Enterprise Center, and then uh, you got the home finale against the Kraken on Sunday. Thank you, sir. We always appreciate your time, and uh, we'll talk again soon. All right. Thanks, guys. See you, Robert. Take care. Robert Thomas, Blues Center, with us on 101 ESPN. He has had a remarkable season. I think a lot of people around the league would say a breakout season. Mm -hmm. He's regarded by a lot as a top-five center in the league. I I think, actually, he broke out before this, but this is... The, the season where he really stamped himself as one of the best in the league. He really has. And, I mean, thinking about the workload that he's taken on, you're talking about him being their number one center now. Now, would I like them to get another center here? That would be great. You need a number two, and it feels like that's something that's another part that's missing. You guys talked about another big defenseman. But Robert Thomas, the way that he continues to progress every single year, I think that's where you look at those big contracts and you say he's worth every single penny of that. The lead passer, I still think there's more in the tank in terms of scoring goals I you know he could be a 30 35 goal scorer I don't think that's outlandish considering the kind of player that he is and he just gets better and I I love the fact that he studies the game you know I mean here's a guy that really enjoys the game is always watching the game and enjoys his role with the St. Louis Blues so good on him and let's see what he can do from here on out Coming up next year on 101 ESPN, we've got the Rush Hour Reset, including the Cardinals with a travel day and the Blues with an unprecedented team record. That's next on 101 ESPN. It's time for a DraftKings at Casino Queen Redbird Report on 101 ESPN. We're Grimsley here for your Redbird Report. Costly errors leading to the Cardinals dropping their series finale against the Phillies, falling to them 4-3. to three. Lance Lynn allowed two unearned runs in the first inning, but allowed just one hit over five innings while striking out six batters. It was a tough day for Victor Scott II, who made his first error, dropping a fly ball in the first that helped the Phillies get their first two runs of the game. Andre Pallante relieved to start the six and did not retire any of the four hitters he faced, giving up three singles and a walk that turned into the other two runs for the Phillies. Your Redbirds will have the day off today, flying to Arizona to open a three-game weekend series against the Diamondbacks. The Redbird Report is presented by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Play, stay, dine at DraftKings at Casino Queen.
biggest stories of the day on the opening drive with a rush hour reset. Driven by R&R Tires. Visit rnrtires.com to lock in your $20 tires deal. It is 9.04 in St. Louis. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Hey, we're going to be at Rawlings tomorrow, the new Rawlings Experience at Westport from 7 to 10. They're opening that Rawlings Experience right here in St. Louis at Westport, and visitors can experience the past, the present, and the future for everything baseball and softball. The opening drive, Dan and I will be there tomorrow morning for the grand opening. At Westport, you can get all the details at 101ESPN.com. Brooke has decided that she does not want to join us tomorrow. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Let's rephrase this in a better way. You can't? I, I really wanted to. I didn't oh. realize this before planning another bridal shower. So that's what's going on here. <laughs> and you don't really, in fairness, you don't get to plan your own Bridal shower. bridal shower. No, I, I just was told a date and I need to show up. Okay. So that's that's what happened. It just happened to coincide with this spectacular event, which I'm very jealous, but I'm telling you guys, just anything you might get, maybe get me an extra one, please. We'll get you absolutely a Rawlings item. You'll get it. Okay, great. I'm Replica gold glove, maybe? Or, or a platinum, maybe. And Ozzy will be there at some point tomorrow, right? He will. He's got an appearance at 10. Hopefully we'll be able to get Osborne Earl Smith on the show. That'd be great. He's got a few of those... Rawlings gold gloves. He's got a few. <laughs> yeah. 13. So 13 of them. They were yeah. on display at uh, his restaurant back in the day. Yeah. Uh, so last night, the Blues were winners over the Chicago Blackhawks 5 2, scored four goals in a row on their first four shots in the first 659 of the game. Jordan Cairo had a pair. Robert Thomas had one late. And the Blues still with a slim chance of making the playoffs. Blues need to win their last three games, and Vegas can only win one of their last four. If that would occur, the Blues would sneak into the playoffs. Slim right now. Slim mm -hmm. is the key thing here. Yeah. But you still want them competing, and that's what they're doing currently right now. So it's all that you can ask for. The Blackhawks are a team, and Bernie mentioned this earlier, that's not doing great this season. But we have seen at times this season for the Blues where they struggle to beat teams that they should be beating. So at least they were able to do that last night. So four goals and four shots, and then no fights for a while <laughs> I, I just what's going on here man you gotta have a, a brawl of if i'm chicago i got a brawl yeah but it's been legislated out of the game dan i understand That's that i don't care if it's like the least likely guy to fight mm -hmm. get going i mean you just had four shots and four goals you got to get your team going it's the blues and the blackhawks let's go i want to get you guys thought on this okay and this is something different than, than the brawls. But there is a thought process that the Blues should just go from a retool into a full rebuild. Okay? The Blackhawks have done that. And in the last seven years, they finished in seventh of seven places in the division. Sixth of seven. Seven of seven. Sixth of eight. Seven of eight. Eight of eight. Eight of eight. You Risky, never, man. You never know how a rebuild is going to go. Buffalo's been doing a rebuild for about 25 years now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big gamble. For example, people suggesting that they trade Bennington and go into a full rebuild. Because you never know when that build is going to be complete. Your player evaluation team better be awesome. Mm -hmm. You better have the faith in them to grab players in drafts. And then your player development better be awesome, too. It's, it's a crapshoot. You're not sure what you're going to get. And I, I'm with you, Randy. By the way, there was an article written about trading Bennington that was floated out there. That's ridiculous. It is. I mean, that's insanity in my mind. He's got to be here. And if you have a chance to get to the playoffs this year, even, he would be reason number one in my mind as to why you'd get there. And that's Elliot Friedman that put that out there. I think that that was just him just purely speculating. Mm -hmm. Because if you also read the rest of his report on it, or his idea, I guess is the better way to put it, because it's not much of a report, he kind of cited that it hasn't been a great year for Bennington. And I think that if you watch Bennington, it, this season, you actually watch him in a game, you realize how important he has been for the Blues this season. And Friedman would do well to go to the Athletic, where one of their analytics guys, give him credit here, but paid attention to what Jordan Bennington has done. And in his three Vezina 
candidates. Now, uh, obviously, Connor Hellebuck is the guy, but he lists Bennington as his number three Vezina candidate because he's been so dominant under bad circumstances this year. And I would extend the goaltending to even what we saw last night with Joel Hofer. Yeah. You've gotten a one-two punch out of these guys, mm-hmm. and as you retool, rebuild, whatever the case may be, if you're going to get wins, you're going to have to steal some along the way because your talent may not match up with the best talent in the league, but one thing that can be a steadying force for you, neutralizing that, is your goaltender. Right. Your goaltender can steal your game. So I, I don't. I couldn't see a scenario where he'd leave St. Louis. I could be wrong, but I wouldn't do it. No, not that a would chance. Be a burn down rather than a rebuild right, right. at that point. Let me give you a couple of paragraphs from this piece by Jesse Granger at the Athletic. The Blues are statistically one of the worst defensive teams in the NHL. They've given up the fifth most high danger chances and the seventh most. Matthew, expected goals per 60 minutes. Despite (laughs) that, Bennington has managed to save 27.16 goals above expected. He's the biggest reason St. Louis has remained in the playoff chase as long as it has. It's been a season full of spectacular desperation saves for the 30-year-old. Outside of having his legs seemingly made of rubber, how does Bennington do it? Many times it starts with his ability to find his edges from the butterfly, like the athletic save that he made on Kings defenseman Mikey Anderson on March 13th. Then he goes on to uh, provide the the statistics for Jordan Bennington. So at least he is getting recognized by people that really follow him and the team as one of the best in the league. Where would the Blues be without him? Yeah, they Just would, answer that question. Oh, yeah. would not be going into the final three games with the exactly. playoff chance. No. It's, it's that easy. Have you also seen the reports reporting or coming back out to the surface? Brady Kachuk possibly a trade going on there? I Do you guys it. buy into it or not? Believe it when I see it. By the way, it looks like I'm watching our television here. The patrons, not fans. Patrons. The patrons at the Masters have gathered, and Fred Ridley, the chairman of Augusta National Golf Club, is ready to signal the uh, ceremony, ceremonial first tee that shot, and it's always a, a great moment at the Masters. And because of a weather delay, the official start will be happening at, at 9.30. The Cardinals yesterday at the ballpark fell to the Phillies 4-3. to three. Cardinals take two of or uh, take one of three from Philadelphia. They wind up going 500 on their season opening homestand, their home season opening homestand, and now take off to Arizona. Well, they, they'll take on the Diamondbacks for three this weekend. It was a very rough day for Victor Scott the second, and in, you know he had his first inning fielding error, and it led to two runs for the Phillies, which is why you see the two unearned runs on Lance Lynn's final line, and then he had that eighth inning base running gaffe that really just proved costly there in the end. What do you think about Victor Scott the second right now? As we know, Lars Dubar is coming back, but they're not sending him down i think he's overmatched right now i mean i I just think he's overmatched now you don't have to send him down because some of the other guys aren't quite ready new uh, new bar and the corresponding move was pedro pajes but i think even a bigger issue with this club is their lack of offense 13 games in third lowest average at 219 third fewest home runs 11 third lowest batting average with runners in scoring position eighth lowest ops now you say well where, where are you finding that where are you looking at and the big names are not coming through that's arenado hasn't homered in 38 games goldschmidt hitting 182 back to arenado he hasn't had a ball barreled this year zero and jordan walker 27 balls in play 16 on the ground that's the issue that they had with him last year if those three don't hit that's why you have a lack of offense. And that's the thing is that when you're talking about Victor Scott the second looking overmatched, one through nine, some of these guys look overmatched right now. And that's a big glaring issue mm-hmm. that you have. Now, some highlights. Yvonne Herrera has been great so far. And also Mason Wynn. I think that those are two of your big highlights. Now, those are your younger players. You shouldn't completely rely on them for your offense, but at least you're getting something from them. I was concerned coming out of spring about Mason Wynn offensively. Mm-hmm. And just what I saw last year, didn't have a great spring, which I don't put a lot of stock into but he he looks the part man he looks relaxed he looks like he belongs and when you feel that way as a player usually you perform and that's what we're seeing out of mason win by the way going back to goldschmidt his career high strikeout percentage was 25.1 percent in 2018 when he was 30 years old with arizona right now goldie is striking out 30.8 percent of the time 36 it, it maybe it's just going to take a little bit for him to get going and it's a small and i mean in the in the look of baseball it's 162 games you're 13 games in and we have a 
uh, job to do where we show up every day and analyze every game or take a look at the small sample size that is 13 games. But Arenado Goldie Walker got a hit. And if they don't hit, could be a long year. Yep. There you have it. That's today's Rush Hour Reset here on 101 ESPN. Next up, a couple of nights ago, the Masters had their Masters dinner. And John Rahm had a spectacular menu, but we've got better ones. And they're next on 101 ESPN. <laughs> It is the opening drive on 101 ESPN, and every year, the defending champion at the Masters gets to put together a menu of his favorite food for the Masters dinner, and every year, the menu is released to the public, and John Rahm, uh, from Spain, had a really Spanish-centric menu. No problem with that. I don't have... Uh, you guys have any problem with it with the menu that he turned out? I love paella. No, not at all. I love paella. Okay. Mm, yes, paella. Do you want to explain what the menu was on there? <laughs> yeah, here's here's what he had. on his menu? Uh, and, and I can't tell you in detail because it would take too long. But uh, his uh, appetizers included Ibiracos, yep. Chistora con patata, uh, Izzy Edibal... Uh, he had a bunch of cool stuff. 
think that first one was the uh, Abedrico ham, which is a, the yeah. best ham in the world. Okay. He, uh, his main courses were either a Basque ribeye or uh, white uh, uh, turbo fish with white asparagus. And then he had uh, puff pastry for dessert that was his mom's secret recipe. And uh, it was served in honor of Mr. John Rahm. It looked really good. It looked r- good. So we decided to put together our uh, master's menus. And I'm taking care of you guys. I just I want you to be happy. This is our... Uh, I'm sure you put more thought into this segment than you have anything else. I have. Cardinals <laughs> offense, blues, four goals, four shots. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, dude. Yeah, I, have. <laughs> I figured as much. So we're starting with Fenton Bar and Grill Trash Wings. Yes. I love the it. signature golden oh, sauce and ranch on the side. Grande nachos. It's a nacho bar, by the way. It's a nacho bar. Yeah. Has it ever been done before? I don't know if it's been done at the Masters, but it's been done at the 703 Club at Bush Stadium, and it's absolutely <laughs> delicious. Yeah, I've heard a lot about these trash wings from Fenton Bar oh, and Grill. The best. And oh, that would be good. at yeah. Fenton Bar and at Grill, Fenton Bar one Grill. of your great we're sponsors. Gonna, uh, yeah, Chuck Nash is coming to Augusta with me to prepare them, though. I was wondering about that. you got to have yep. them fresh. So oh, yeah. you got to no bring a team it. to do this. Yeah. But, and by the way, would you guys like to have the, uh, the nacho fountain with Gouda? Mm. I'm going to pass on that. Okay, yeah. so we'll just do the, the nacho bar. Okay. Uh, shrimp <laughs> cocktail. Got to have shrimp cocktail with a lot of shrimp. And then uh, my salad's going to be just a regular Caesar salad with really good croutons. Okay? Okay. Oh, and uh, by the way, one other appetizer. Uh, cheeseburger sliders. Mm. Okay. That's been done in the past at yeah. the uh, Masters. Yeah. So that's going to be really good. So we got the wings. We got the cheeseburger sliders. We've got the grande nachos at the, on the nacho bar. Shrimp cocktail. It's salad healthy is, right now. Yeah, big time. And then the, <laughs> the Caesar salad. There, that's where we're going with the health. Get a little uh, green in there. My, uh, oh, one other note about those uh, cheeseburger sliders uh, from our friends at High Point. Okay. I like mm. that. Uh, main course, uh, prime ribeye or swordfish. You can, or both, if you so desire. Okay, we aren't going to any poultry here. Prime ribeye or swordfish, sides, tater tots, <laughs> salt and smoke mac and cheese, yeah. grilled asparagus, <laughs> steamed broccoli. Dessert. Guess the first dessert. Randy's your, carrot, your cake. carrot cake. There you go. Yeah, your that's own on mine. Cake. Yep. Oh, that's good. Uh, so or, would you ask them to roll out a Traeger grill at the uh, at the <laughs> Masters? Yeah, no doubt about okay. it. Uh, then uh, also you can have the choice, or you can take all of the three. Uh, the Traeger carrot cake, the chocolate cherry cheesecake, yum, 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 or French silk pie. It's a long menu, man. You I, I know. A lot to eat, right? We got a lot of people to feed. Okay. And then the Dr. Pepper products for the drinks, and we'll have an open bar. Was that and, even a part of this? I didn't know that that was something that they even did. Oh, but, well, they better. I know okay. that they've got the association with Coca-Cola, but I'm demanding as the defending champion that I get the Dr. Pepper products there because I love Dr. Pepper products. Uh, and then I'd overeat and miss my tea time the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, there's a reason why they seem to do it a little bit more ahead so it can settle. Oh, good. Smart. Randy, yeah. I, I, I just want to say that basically what you just put out there sounds like what you did the other day at the 703 Club because you had nachos and then a salad to balance it out in between. I did. And you kind of sandwiched yeah. your food groups like now, that. Here's the thing, Brooke. Not only did I do it there, but I didn't have the prime ribeye. But, but I would do this in the most glorious of times as I defended my master's championship. And I would do it if I were on death row as my last oh, meal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say this sounds more like a death row meal. Yeah, kind of. Uh-huh. It is. Yeah. I don't know if you'd get that many choices, though, on death row. <laughs> oh, I think you get what you want. Is that right? Yeah. I, I think, hope. No, they I changed find that. Out. Oh, man. They changed that. That kind of sucks. Yeah, they definitely limited that. We need to change that. No, back. I, I kind of like that we're not going to give them everything they want. Okay. All right. Uh, so what do you have, Brooke, as your menu? Okay, well, after that one, Randy, I'm going to go ahead and say that mine will probably not be the fan favorite, but still, it's my favorite. It's things that I, it's things that I like. So I'm kind of going Matsuyama with my appetizer uh-huh. here. So we're going to do assorted sushi, nigiri, sashimi, and some gyoza, the crispy kind specifically, which is what I like. Also, for the salad options, we're going to have a Caesar or a miso ginger salad with fresh greens, of course. And then for the main course, we have a filet or my dad's sukiyaki. My dad's sukiyaki is one of my favorite things on earth. So basically, it's a traditional Japanese hot pot dish of like beef, vegetables, tofu. It's sweet and savory. It's 
amazing. Maybe I'll bring some back for you guys. Okay. I'd love that. Yeah, yeah. it'd be great. Because yeah. he always sends me home with a lot. It's David's favorite as well. And then for my shareable sides, we're going to have rice, which goes well with the sukiyaki, cream spinach, or a good old-fashioned loaded baked potato, which, of course, goes well with the filet. And for my dessert, I have Randy's carrot cake and a giant homemade double chocolate chip cookie with an ice cream side. Yum. Mm. Mine would be an ode to uh, St. Louis. I'd start with a shrimp cocktail uh, provided by Annie Guns. Love that. Mm. I would Yum. go lobster ravioli from Paul Mano's, uh -huh. which is incredible. Um, then Emo's Pizza. Whether you like Emo's or not, I don't care. And uh, if, if my counterparts didn't like Emo's, then you're out. Yeah. Tough. You're out. <laughs> figure out the ravioli or figure out the shrimp and load up. But mm. if you don't like emo, that's the only course. That that for really? for the main meal. Uh huh. You gotta you gotta have emos. And I'll have various kinds. If you want vegetables, you want meat, whatever you want. But I'd go emos. Emos ribs maybe? No, they're out. Dang. Going emos. Okay. And then for uh, dessert, I would fly in Randy. Uh huh. Uh, Thank you. I need fly in Randy. <laughs> fly in my buddy. And his yeah. Traeger. And his Traeger. Uh -huh. I don't know how we're gonna we're gonna have to get a private plane. We'll be fine. We just won the Masters. Maybe if I, <laughs> I'd find a guy that had a private plane and say, hey, you want to come to the Masters? Yeah, call Matt Holiday. He knows a guy. He, call Matt Holiday. He know, maybe Matt comes. <sighs> yeah, he can sign some autographs. Uh, and then I'd go with also Ted Drews. Great. That's so fantastic. That, that's mm. it. Very simple menu. You have your you got a few mm -hmm. options, and if you don't like it, you're out. Okay. Go Perfect. figure out something else. Go get a burger somewhere else. Yeah, I'm with you. I think that's great. Mm. Those are all really good. I don't know. If there's one that maybe I like more than others, I already got a text that somebody hated mine because of the sushi. I, no, I love, love sushi. I, I love that. Uh, that's great. And I gave you the filet option right. as well, yeah. so that you can go another yeah. direction if you don't like Japanese food for whatever reason. Right. No, I, I think it's delicious. I think it'll be fabulous. Three one four says Randy knows he has to pay for all the food at his dinner, right? I don't think that that's no, the case. No, the Masters no. takes yeah, care of the it. Yeah. And they've got plenty of money. Well, and that's the other thing. We won the Masters. I'm not worried about it. Even if I do have to pay, that's I'm true. not worried. Don't they give the menu that they want in advance? And these yeah. chefs like work really hard to master whatever it is that they want from that menu. Yes. See, I don't want that. I want my own stuff brought in. Well, John Rahm had his mom's secret recipe for that dessert, and they actually had to really work hard and have him test it so that it was perfect uh, because it's it's her own secret recipe. Okay. So the Rahm mom uh, came Rahm mom. Her. How about take it or leave it? The best picture in sports every year is that of those that have won the green jacket all together for the dinner. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. Yes. It's an amazing picture. I, I'm always so just, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall during that event and yeah. that's happening there so the other thing i'm going to have is as you walk out a bowl of reese's for you just to grab as many reese's as you want this is like a unlimited buffet basically yeah, is the totally. style that you're going yeah, for that's where I'm going. I, I, I was thinking that i think you may have to pay yeah a new york times article that broke down rom's menu that's where and actually, i read it and actually got that's into the story about how they had to test his mom's recipe they actually did break down how the winner gets to choose and pay for the that's dinner that's fine i'm good he, I, I, I did win the masters <laughs> yeah. so you should be I, fine yeah yeah, it should be fine. You're not going to have to cut out the nacho bar. Might no. be too extravagant. No, the nacho bar is not going to be too extravagant. <laughs> Rom's, <laughs> winning, Rom's winning purse last year was uh, $3.24 million. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, but he just got $350 million too. Yeah, yeah he's going to be just fine. Yeah. Uh, so, Matthew, do you have any uh, – what, what, what's your main course there? My main – I'm honestly – I have to pay for it, but I would use that opportunity just to get the nicest stuff, like, from around the entire planet. So I'm, I'm, I'm with Brooke. I'm getting some Japanese sashimi. I'm getting some Chilean sea bass. Nice. I'm rolling with John Rahm. I'm making one of my appetizers, something with a berico ham because it's insane. But my number one absolute – I'm 100% what I'm going with – I'm going to stick maybe a little bit with uh, with, with my opening um, salvo of the sashimi. I want wagyu. That's the, all I want mm -hmm. for my final thing. Just, I, I don't know if I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to do like the quick like stone fired wagyu, uh, stone cooking wagyu, like they do at like a classic like Japanese uh, steakhouse, or if I just want to do just like a regular wagyu steak. But something with wagyu would be involved for my uh, Masters dinner 100. percent Oh yes. What do you think the best thing that could happen at the Masters this year? Tiger, Tiger. winning. Yep. The, 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 or be in contention. Yeah. I think being in contention is the best. Well, now winning would be amazing, amazing yeah. but yes. being in contention is the biggest thing to me. Yeah. yeah the, if he is in the hunt on Sunday afternoon, CBS's ratings are going to go through the roof. But Even if he makes the cut, I think, because yeah. they'll yeah. keep cutting back to him and seeing how he's doing. But for us on Monday morning, the best thing would be Tiger Winning. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. You want to have something to talk about, that would be something to talk. You're going to talk Masters anyway, but... Yeah. 
I think Philly Mick, certainly Tiger, you know, maybe a, an older guy that has gotten, a, you know, is in the tournament mm-hmm. making a run. That would be awesome to see. How about Rory against, not, not Rom, but Rory against one of either DeChambeau or uh, Kepka? That would be great. Final pairing. Yeah, and Rory is kind of like the sacrificial lamb for the PGA Tour. If I was him, I'd be irate in how they use me. Yeah, I would too. He was so against Liv, came out, talked about it, where the PGA Tour is, and then they did the deal behind uh, behind closed doors, and all of a sudden they may have, a, in conjunction at some point, Liv and the PGA Tour come together. It has to happen. So you got a villain against the good guy. And this is easy. I can negotiate this thing in a blink, and they can fix it in 10 minutes. Which would be so, have it be the old PGA tour with the new purses and the PIF pays the purses. So you make it a world tour too. But who do you screw in America? And do Americans want to get up at two thirty in the morning to watch a golf tournament? As long as I had world golf rankings uh-huh. from a fan's perspective, that would be very important to me yeah. too. I, I think it. Where like do you get rid of the Palmer? What do you, what what are the tournaments that you're getting rid you're of? You're talking about Bay Hill. Yeah, you're, yeah. You, obviously, you're getting rid of John Deere. Do you get rid of the Hawaii and California? Yeah, I, I think I could say goodbye to some of those. Yeah. I'd be okay. I wouldn't like it, but I'd be okay with it if that yeah. means I'm getting everybody together. Yeah, you are getting everybody together, but I think the vast majority of the money that is gleaned for the PGA Tour comes from American companies. And would the sponsors then hang on because of of Liv? If you're in Mm -hmm. conjunction with them, do you really want to sponsor them? There's going to be some people that philosophically will not do that. Yeah, and maybe the thing to do is just have the PIF pay for everything. That's the other way to look at it. Then you just have the... uh, the Bay Hill Invitational. Then you have the Pebble Beach Pro Am. Then all of a sudden you don't have sponsor names anymore. It's just all paid for by the PIF. I can't imagine that all the players would be on board with that, though. That would be the biggest thing. And even with some of the big names over with Live Golf, I have yet to watch one of their events, and I don't know what their viewership is even like. And, and Brooke, the, the thing about the players is that some of the guys that didn't jump, they have to be made whole. Yes. There mm-hmm. are players that are going to say, now, wait a minute, Rombo got his money and mm-hmm. Phil Mickelson got his, and I decided to stay and be loyal to the tour, and you're telling me I don't get paid whole? Here's the thing. After my master's dinner, everybody would be whole. <laughs> <laughs> they need a bathroom, though. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> like, it's, it's completely unrealistic, and, it, like, Tiger's not going to win. It's like it's just not going to happen. Like his body's just he can't walk that many holes in, in that small And there's like, a lot time. of undulation it's, it's at not, the Masters. It's, just, it's not going to happen. So realistically... Is the best thing for golf Shoffley finally pushing through? Is it Rory you being a big name again? Is it just, or is it just a guy like Scotty Scheffler becoming a more dominant figure? What would be the best for golf? That's a realistic outcome. Golf needs a dominant figure that everybody thinks is better than anybody on Live, and that's Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, I, I think having a Live guy win though, like a Phil Mickelson would be amazing. Yeah, oh. if he came out and won, that would be awesome. Yeah. I'm a huge Phil Mickelson fan, and I know he's got his issues, and I know there's a <laughs> lot of things. Golf. I, exactly. His but I still habit. would love to see it. Yeah. I still would. It would be interesting. It would be interesting. Uh, coming up next year on 101 ESPN with Lars Newtbar coming back, how will the Cardinal outfield be configured as we move forward? That's next on 101 ESPN.
It's a great day if you're a Together Credit Union member. They just launched their new savings account called Accelerated Savings, and it can pay you 5.00% annual percentage yield on your first $5,000 saving balance. High-yield savings accounts like Together Credit Union's Accelerated Savings are easy to open, provide you access to your money without penalties, and are easy to manage online. Plus, the interest you earn compounds daily. This is a guaranteed low-risk investment because it is your savings account. And if you pair your accelerated savings with a Together Credit Union Achieve It checking, you can save even more. Together Credit Union's Achieve It checking empowers you by rounding up your transactions and deposits the money directly into your savings account. Plus, eligible members can earn a match of up to $8 a month. Start your journey with confidence, knowing that your money is working as hard as you to secure your financial future. Step by your nearest Together Credit Union branch or go online to togethercu.org to learn more. 5.00% annual percentage yield earned on a balance of $100 to $5,000.99. Rates accrue at, uh, as of 3-9-2024. Rates subject to change without notice. Valid with an open checking account. Other rates and terms available. Membership eligibility required. Must be 22 or over. One accelerated savings account per member. Federally insured by the NCUA. This is Rocky with your Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplax. The Cardinals yesterday dropped the series against the Phillies in Game 3 with a 4-3 loss. Lance Lynn went out there, gave five innings pitch, allowed two runs, unearned four walks and struck out six Cardinals will be back in action tomorrow when they start a three game series against the Diamondbacks 840 will be the first pitch Blues will also be back in action tomorrow off today after a 5-2 win over the Blackhawks you can watch the Blues fate though tonight as the Flames and the Kings play late on the NHL slate that is your sports center update driven by Johnny Londoff find your roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com are you kidding me One of the most notable events of our time is the uh, double murders that were committed in 1994 of O.J. Simpson's ex-wife and a, a waiter by the name of Ron Goldman. And we get word within the last few minutes, O.J. Simpson's family tweeting that he has passed away surrounded by his children and grandchildren. Uh, he apparently had a battle with cancer that I was not aware of. And uh, his family says during this time of transition, his family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. So Orenthal James Simpson passing away. And that's the big thing to note here is that sometimes on X, I know that people can get hacked. This seems like a very serious message. And if you go back and look at some of his other tweets on X, it shows where he is talking about his battle with cancer and different things like that. So that might be what's going on here. But we're still waiting for an official word where some others confirm it outside of the family. So that's breaking news here. Meanwhile, the Cardinals bringing Lars Newtbar back for tomorrow's game in Arizona. And with Newtbar back, 
How does that shape the Cardinal outfield? Yesterday, they had Brendan Donovan in left and Alec Burleson in right. You would have to think that at some point soon, Jordan Walker is going to get back in the lineup. He gets back-to-back -back days off with the off day today. Uh, and with Newt Barr back, I would imagine that he will be the Cardinal left fielder. So how does the outfield get comprised now? That's Where does Newt Barr play center? Well, here's the thing. I think he, that he's going to be in left field, and here's why. One, down in the minors during his rehab stint, when he was in the outfield, he was in left field. That's where they had him. Now, I know at the beginning of the season, the original plan before everything imploded, it seems like it could have been a different path for him. But right now, I just feel like that Ali Marmol likes Victor Scott the second in center field. And with his speed, it makes a lot of sense. And I know that he had the issue yesterday. He's going to make mistakes. And I think that he held himself accountable yesterday in his postgame comments. He didn't sugarcoat it. He brought up the rain. That is some a factor that you can bring up with the error, his first error that he's had. But he also didn't make excuses for himself. He's not going to be a robot. He's human. He will make some mistakes. You would like to see him do better offensively because that's my big concern right now. We've talked about Nolan Arnato. We've talked about Paul Goldschmidt, of course. But also this outfield, you need something more offensively from them. Outside of the error that uh, he committed yesterday early in the game, and it was costly, he's played really well defensively and I think that's one of the things the Cardinals look at as they get back to fundamentally sound baseball is trying to make sure that they put the best defensive lineup out there as well now the counterpoint to that is that you have an issue with him offensively he's been overwhelmed and at times overmatched but I would look at the lineup is that Donovan goes to second base Gorman be your DH you got Walker in right you got Scott in center at least for the immediate and then Newpar in left and remember too the other thing is that you're going to Arizona that outfield is enormous mm -hmm. in center and uh, you got to cover a lot of ground so it seems like it would be a, a likely choice now to keep him here. Pajes was sent down to activate Newpar. It was not Victor Scott, so keep that in mind. They're, he's going to be here for a little bit until Edmund and probably Carlson get back. Now, how do you handle the catchers here moving forward? Because obviously, Wilson Contreras was back in the lineup. He's still dealing with some soreness in his hand, but Yvonne Herrera has also been hitting well. If you look, he has three home runs right now, 290 average, 875 OPS, and the small sample size of what he's getting right now, but how do you manage the catchers moving forward? That's a great question. Um, and trying to figure out because if if Donovan moves to second base, then what happens with the spot of your DH, mm -hmm. which is Nolan Gorman? Now, mm -hmm. do you want to spot him against right-handed pitching? I I want to see him play all the time, and he's starting to swing the bat well. Um, and and you you're paying Contreras a ton of money, and he is when he's in the lineup for the most part produced. But you have to be excited with Avon Herrera. It's a good problem to have. Exactly what direction you want to go, and Herrera. that would also, by the way, just lead you to maybe Newpar going to center, keeping Donovan in left, and then you're able to get, keep the guys that you have that are swinging the bat well, and Scott goes to the bench. The problem with that is that if he's here, you don't want to sit him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. If Victor Scott's on the team, he's got to play. I think right? so. Herrera is tied for the team lead in home runs with three. He and Nolan Gorman. He's been one of your most notable offensive performers. So uh, I think you, and, and I wouldn't rush him. I, I would try to utilize him much like Tony utilized Yadier Molina in 2004 and ease him in. And fortunately for the Cardinals, they have options. They can DH Contreras. Maybe Contreras could, if the struggles of Paul Goldschmidt continue, maybe when Goldie takes a day a week off, maybe Contreras goes over there and plays first base. I think there are options for the Cardinals to get Contreras his at-bats and utilize Herrera. But if, if Yvonne Herrera only winds up playing... 50 or 60 games for the Cardinals. I'm fine with that this year, even yeah. though he's been really good. I think his bat will be what keeps him in the lineup, mm -hmm. though. You Amazing. know, he, he's swinging the bat so well, I don't want to sit that bad. No. And if that means I have to sit Victor Scott then or send him down, then I, I'm going to have to do that ultimately, to create space. Yeah, ultimately, that's what you're going to have to do. So, yeah, maybe it winds up being... Newt Bar in center with Donovan in left mm. and Walker in right, and then your infield as it's been, and then... You can have Scott down in the minors and utilize Contreras more as a DH. And that's what I would rather see. I'd rather see Herrera get some consistent playing time down the minors so that he can, can get a little bit better offensively before he comes back up. And he will come back up this season. I think that's something Scott? important to note. Yes, Victor yeah. Scott II. Um, I think that's important to note that he will come back this season. But you talk about the DH position. That's getting crowded. 
your bench is getting crowded here, too, with all these different transactions and moves. And ultimately, Matt Carpenter is going to come back, and he's going to have a spot on the roster. What do you do with Alec Burleson? That's yeah. another one. Right. You know, he's he's got options to go to the minor leagues, too. So you got to play the options game and, and those that have them. It's it's a great problem to have. If you're getting healthier, it'll work itself out, but it's a good problem to have. And if you can keep everybody healthy by the time you get to the trade deadline, and they aren't getting a number one st starter before the trade deadline, but they will have major league ready hitters available to move if a uh, number one starter pops uh, open and available before the deadline. I think the one that is just the most polarizing move that you'll make is Victor Scott. And mm -hmm. for some people, it'd be easy to say, just send him down. I'm one of them that thinks he's been overmatched here. Mm -hmm. And it's not that hard to look at it. His numbers bear that out offensively. But he gives you so much defensively. Give him a little bit of run here before these guys get healthy. And then at that point, you make your decision on what you want to do. It happened with Keith Hernandez. Yeah. Keith Hernandez really struggled early in his career. They had to send him down. Actually, I had to send him down a couple well, of times my, exactly. before he figured it out. So uh, for a guy that had never played AAA before, if Victor Scott gets some experience there, I have no problem with that at all. I'm with you. Offensively. Uh, next up, we've got rock and roll as we head down the stretch of this edition of the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Folks, in today's fast-paced world of digital marketing, making meaningful connections with your audience can be a daunting challenge for any business. But what if there was a place where connections aren't just made, but nurtured for growth? Enter 2060 Digital, our sister company, backed by a 100-year-old media um, empire just like 101 ESPN. If you're a business owner or a marketer seeking more strategic ways to reach and engage customers, look no further than 2060 Digital. With 12 years of ex expertise, 2060 specializes in simplifying the complexities of digital marketing. Our team demystifies the process by transforming it from a challenge into an opportunity for your business. Whether it's enhancing your brand's online presence, optimizing digital campaigns, or increasing customer engagement, 2060 is here to propel your business forward. Think your business has room to grow? Let us prove it to you. Visit 101ESPN.com slash 2060digital to request a complimentary digital audit today.
gonna rock! You know, and roll. Let's rock, let's rock today. It's time for Rock and Roll. By the way, now on the heels of O.J. Simpson's family tweeting the uh, news of his demise, Adam Schefter has made it official. It is official. I'm just, I'm sad that Norm MacDonald couldn't live to see this day. <laughs> I am too. Oh, no. <laughs> So what do we have in rock and roll? You see, I'm taking a page out of Dan's book. Mm-hmm. Just move it forward. I got two dozen more jokes like that. You want to hear them? Oh, no. Okay, That's not fine. what's in rock and oh, roll. No, fine. We'll talk about other stuff, relevant sports in, in the matter. John Calipari has taken a new job <laughs> with the... Can we say this? He's a bad guy. He's a double murderer, okay? He's a double murderer. Allegedly. That's yeah. only if he did it, Randy. I mean, if he did it. There is a book. If the, if the glove doesn't fit... Must have quit? Did if it? I did it. That was the name of the book. I think it, it was, yeah. yeah. I will say, theory-wise, that with the glove, the blood, it would shrink it anyway. So, of course, the glove wouldn't fit. I just want to throw that out there. I and am a true wearing, crime fan. He was wearing so. a, another glove underneath and we have, when he tried that on. And we now have people in documentaries saying, not allegedly, stating unequivocally, they were messing with his medication so that he was more um, bloated. So that his, his yeah, he, that so he was so he was bloated and his hands were as big as possible. You like, just needed. We know that's what happened. You just needed Randy's master's menu, and after all that sodium, you would be very bloated after yes, that. Right. Actually, exactly. That's <laughs> a really good point. Um, John Calabari has taken the job with the Razorbacks in Arkansas. A little bit of problem though. Uh, uh, does he know what coach he's actually going to be? What team he's actually going to be coaching? Here was Calipari yesterday at uh, his press conference announcing the move. You know what? I'm jacked about another opportunity. Like, I'm like, let's go. Now, I met with the team. There is no team. <laughs> so now, I got to, Hunter's really extremely confident, but we got to get a roster together. And some of it is a little bit of everything, but we will. It may take a little longer because there are kids that put their name in the NBA draft that are going to go through. So there it is, John Calipari <laughs> stating, I met with the team. There is no team. And I have a feeling he's probably not the first uh, new head coach that has had a sentiment <laughs> like that in the last week. Uh, Yeah. One, this feels like a fever dream. Just watching that press yeah, conference, that I laughed out loud when that quote came out of him because it's just a very funny thing to say. The whole press conference, I don't know if you guys saw it, was interesting. They also did a round of applause for the Tyson guy. He was there for that, uh-huh. of course. And there was a, there was a standing ovation for him. Which, I mean, he did bring Calipari, so that is fair. But it felt like a fever dream, everything that was happening yesterday. I could have never seen any of this coming. I I would expect him to leave Kentucky. Just never thought that he would end up in Arkansas. And doesn't he have somebody from Kentucky in the transfer portal that I think is going to follow him to Arkansas to get things started? I think he was left with one walk-on and maybe a couple other fringe guys that was left. His salary is $7 million. Signing bonus was $1 million. Appearance in the NCAA tournament, he gets 50K, round two, 100, sweet 16, 250, final four, 350, national title, he gets half a million. So those are some of the contract details that have come out. Good for him. Pretty lucrative business, I'd say. Yeah. He just he also a gets, team. what, <laughs> 10 tickets to each home basketball game, five to each game for every UA sport, two cars, and a club membership, too, at Fayetteville Athletic Club. Oh, well, that's why it took so long to finalize the deal. <laughs> yeah, those football tickets are worth a lot. <laughs> Can't afford that club membership. Make sure you get that, too. You, yeah. mean, you mean Sam Pittman's not moving the needle for By the Hogs? I do want to say we got a um, mic drop a few uh, like late last week uh, that I wasn't able to play, and it was somebody being very mad that uh, at Randy for making fun of the Arkansas program um, overall, it's just an athletic program. And he was like, well, Arkansas has just so many more national championships than the Missouri Tigers. And listen, he's not wrong. Missouri has uh, one in track and field and one in baseball. And the baseball one's from the 50s. Here's the thing. he said In his thing, he said, he said the uh, Arkansas Razorbacks have so many more national titles than the Missouri Tigers. Listen, technically he's correct. But Arkansas's national titles are one in basketball in 1994 and then 60 in track and field. Yeah. You have one national title. And nobody 
knows about it. Here's oh, the thing. Right. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I love their track and field program. You have, have one a great track title. and field program. But I enjoy I, track I, and field. I was title. not comparing Arkansas <laughs> to Missouri. I was comparing Arkansas to the great athletic programs, and I do believe that with the money they spend, the return on investment at Arkansas has shown me that they really aren't very self-aware. They mm. they think they're better than they really are. Now, I applaud them for trying, but I certainly wasn't trying to compare them to Mizzou by any stretch because they have a basketball national championship. They have a football national championship. Mm. No, but they're trying to compare themselves to Alabama in football and obviously Kentucky in basketball, and it just doesn't work that way. Don't you think that a lot of Arkansas fans are wishing they would have gotten Eli Drinkwitz no in this situation. They're because gonna, remember when, yeah. because the hirings were at the same time and you had Sam Pittman at first, things did go well, and now it's just really gone off the course. Sam Pittman, it seems like there's a lot of talk about him not being able to really do a good job of recruiting with a younger age. Compare that to what Eli Drinkwitz mm -hmm. is doing. That's what every single program, including Arkansas, wants, and he's from there. I uh, I get uncomfortable watching Pig Suey. It's so weird. Pig Suey? It feels like a call in the hogs. Call in the hogs. That's what hogs. it is. Is it pig suey? Yeah, woo pig suey. Woo pig suey. I remember when Dana Altman was being introduced as the head coach of Arkansas. Now he's obviously at Oregon and had a number of years great run at Creighton. And he basically said, I'm kind of uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. This is kind of, I don't know, this isn't my, my cup of tea kind of thing. Um, and he, he kept the job for a day, right? Yeah. Arkansas, uh, they can claim it. They do not have. They 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 do not have a football national championship. 1964, Bama finished number one. They finished number two. Bama went eight and zero. They went seven and zero. Okay. Bama's the national championship in 64. They, they claim it, but there's like there's like there's a titles all over the place in the 60s and stuff where teams like to claim it when they weren't the number one team in the nation. They don't okay. have a they don't have a football national championship okay. in my opinion. But that's either way, <laughs> one or one or none. But the fact of the matter is, they have never been regarded as one of the best programs in America. It's, they, they just don't have the championships to stack up to the Alabamas, the USC's, the Notre Dame's, the Michigan's of the world in football, or the Carolinas, Kentucky's, Dukes of the world in basketball. And where is that battle line trophy right now? Mizzou. North. M-I-Z. There you go. There you go. That's kind of a nothing trophy. Oh, come on, yeah, Randy. I mean, you're right. But so, you don't, but you don't believe in the manufactured <laughs> yeah. rivalry? Yeah. Here, here's the thing. I, I would hope. Uh, no, I don't. I, I, <laughs> no, 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 you shouldn't. I, I would hope that that person that texted in and is really thrilled about the 60 National Track Championships, which is great. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But uh, if you're that down on Mizzou, then you shouldn't want Eli Drinkwitz as your head football coach in, in Arkansas, should you? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I think they would take him in a heartbeat. Yeah, apparently that's Johnny Tyson's next target. Oh, no. Yep. Stay away. Yep. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Nobody eat uh, those chicken nuggets here no, in Missouri. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Pleasure. That's our producer, <laughs> audio, video engineer, the one, the only Matthew Rocchio. Brooke, have a great three-day weekend, or is it going to yes. be more? No, it's it's three days. Okay, so we'll, you'll be back I'm on Monday? I'm not going to surprise you on Monday by not showing up. Okay. I'm glad. I'll be I'm, here. I'm glad that you'll be here. I can't wait to see the gifts that you guys will bring me. Oh, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, Daniel, wow. you and I'm I will Rawlings. be joined I'm at the end Rawlings. of the show tomorrow by one Osborne Earl Smith. Oh, good. He confirmed. He is going to be Great. with us. So we're looking forward to that. We'll also talk to Joe Vitale tomorrow, Jay Delsing talking Masters early in the morning. We're going to have quite a show. Don't we have some, do we have somebody else tomorrow? Uh, maybe not. Uh, uh, not right now. Okay. So that we might, though. That's a pretty good show. We'll see. And we'll be at Rawlings at Westport. So we hope you'll join us there from 7 to 10. We thank you for tuning in, texting in, and being a part of the show for all of us. Until tomorrow morning at 7, have a great Friday Eve, St. Louis. That's right.